I've often said that's the worst. That's the worst thing about the character is, is the Trump tweets, man. Because <laughs> as 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 a Trumpy, I'm often like, uh, oh, you're angry. Ah, so bad. I knew it. I knew you were a Trumpy. <laughs> You finally admit no! I knew it. I'm kidding. I'm joking. No, you weren't. The truth comes out on the SMT podcast. The truth comes out. <laughs> uh, Rants, uh, I have a question, sir. Yes, sir. Are we recording, sir? The whole damn thing. Awesome. The whole damn thing. And the truth awesome. comes out that you are a Trumpy. Are you a Roy, oh, Moore? Are you a Roy Moore fan, oh. too? Oh. Well, you know, he's not all bad. Oh, come I'm on, no. I'm joking. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know when I think about that, I think about the R. Kelly uh interview where he was like she was like, Well, do you like teenage girls? And he was like, When when you say teenage, I don't know you. <laughs> teenage, bro. Thirteen to nineteen, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know it's oh, the cold open. Goodness. I know it's gonna be in the cold open for sure. <laughs> oh God! Hit my music. Sierra Hotel, India, Echo, Lima, Delta, Shield. You are now listening to the SMC Wrestling Podcast with your boys, the Smart, Caleb Baldwin, the Mark, Carl Irvin, and the Contrarian, Rance Morris. Believe. In the pod. Hello and welcome to the SMC Wrestling Podcast. The date is November 16, 2017. I am one of three co-hosts of this lovely podcast. I am Caleb Baldwin, joined as always by two very good friends of mine. First off, fighting out of the red corner oh. from undisclosed location in Arkansas, Carl Irvin, Carl, what's up, man? How you doing? What's going on, Caleb? Uh, it's good to be back for another week of our outstanding yeah. hot takes and uh, everyone or someone's garbage opinions. Not mine, obviously, but someone's. And uh, I'm just ready to jump in and do this. So uh, move along, move along. Okay. And fighting out of the blue corner. I don't have a cool nickname for you, Rance. Uh, we got really? Rance Morris here in a, in, a, in a suburb of Houston. So how you doing, man? Number one, I'm not in a suburb, you asshole. Number I'm two, sorry. why don't I get uh, a, a illustrious introduction? Number three, am I in the blue corner because I'm a Democrat and he's a Republican? Is that why it's blue-red? Whoa. Actually, uh, it's because... like, like hey, I, I, Here's the thing. On my left wrist, I'm wearing a... Delta Delta Theta wristband, my shout favorite tag to, team in Oklahoma. Shout out to Delta Delta Theta, the f- friends yeah. of the show. Yeah, Lance, how the hell are you? And that's in my left. That's on my left hand. And to the left of me on the Skype app here is Carl. So I'm like, okay, and I'll put the blue on the right. And that, that's okay. It's it's nothing political, believe it or that's not. not what well, that's, that's good because mm-hmm. yeah. You play the middle. Definitely. That's what you meant. Yeah. Um, well, that and I'm not a Republican. Also, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm not really a Democrat. I'm really I'm really kind of <laughs> apathetic to the whole situation. But yeah. nonetheless, yeah. we have. Yeah. If, if I got to play we the are... contrarian role, then I might as well play the Democrat role because I'm black, right? That's how we do it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <clears throat> Boy. So uh, real quick before we jump in, guys, you guys seen any movies lately like i know thor just came out i awesome know justice movie. league is about to come out um so you said thor is pretty awesome huh Thor is if you i'm a i'm a comic nerd so i'm not a thor fan i don't like super 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 powerful guys but yo everything yeah. shipped away from dude and the fucking movie it's a comedy with superheroes in it it's not a superhero that got some comedy it's a comedy superheroes in it. it's just hilarious I, I definitely tell you to watch it. It's amazing. Yeah, well, I, haven't interesting. Seen, I, I haven't seen shit. Uh, although I'm thinking about maybe going to see Justice League tomorrow or sometime this weekend. Oh, that'd be <laughs> done this week. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. So that's it, though. I really haven't. The last movie I saw was maybe I think I rented Wonder Woman a few weeks ago. God damn. So, <laughs> yeah, man, I, don't, yeah. I hardly ever get out to the movies uh, these days. So 
But when I do get a chance to go, I usually pick a good one, a block, well, something worthy of going to the theater for on that blockbuster, you know, that type of movie. I'm not going to pay $10 to go watch a Woody Allen movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, just saying. <laughs> Me and my 13 year old wife. Right. Yeah. I'm going to pass on that. So. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the That's Roy a whole other Moore, can of worms. The Roy I'm, Moore story. I'm, I'm going to, oh, goodness. I'm going to rustle some Jimmy's here. I'm actually oh, a little, like, I'm going to rustle some Jimmy's, man. Here lately, I'm actually a little like burnt out on superhero movies, to be honest with you. That's fair. That's I, a lot of like I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed Superman, or I enjoyed Spider Man, but um, I saw the trailers for Thor and Justice League, and I'm like, eh, a little, you know. So, so I haven't seen either. Well, but, um, DC kind of they got to earn the trust because some of their yes. movies have been hot garbage. Uh, not hot, I mean, just not very good. Not compared to their counterpart, who knocks them all out of the park typically so oh no yeah yeah dc is definitely the tna of the situation but, <laughs> bro yeah. that's disrespectful <laughs> wow. to, to, DC's credit, to dc's credit wonder woman was actually really really good uh but other than that some of them have been kind of hmm. the only you, movie you that know was... what else man like you, you know like okay here's the thing you say wonder woman was really good I really enjoyed the Aces and Aids story. That doesn't mean that like, everything around it was shout out. like. Eh. So shout, I mean, out, shout out to Miss Fan who did everything he could to explain why that shit was good. I didn't need explaining. That's all I'm saying. You didn't, but, but uh, they, wow. they spent a whole two hour episode explaining every point because that's how convoluted the shit oh, was. No, I I loved that. I loved that, and they did they did you know go back to it a bunch in that one episode, but. It was necessary, and it like I felt it kind of enhanced it a little. Maybe, but maybe, we're not, maybe. Why are we talking? Why are we talking? And I'm sorry for introducing this. We shouldn't be talking about TNA wrestling angles from 2013. <laughs> we should be talking about shows like uh, like Survivor Series and uh, first a show like an NXT Takeover War Games. Yeah. Just saying. Let's keep talking about comic books. Let's not, man. Because you know who's going to be there? You know who the hell is going to be in the Toyota Center on Saturday? Give me that's a nickname. Why, that's Give me right. a nickname. Give me a nickname. Rance Morris. Hold on. The American Wombat, Rance Morris, is going to be in attendance at TakeOver War Games. It's something. You know what? It's a start. I give you that. It is. We'll work on hey, it. Hey, if you were... I've got your, like, your shirt designs figured out for you now. Just put an oh, American flag God. on them. There you go. Oh God! <laughs> All right. So yeah, we're gonna talk about that off off air. Um, but yes, your boy got tickets to War Games. Uh, I am growing up in the South, of course. You know, all of us like all of us. I'm a, I was an old school WCW fan. That's where I started. That was WCW before WWE. So I had to see War Games live, bro. I had to see it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped. And as we get to talking about the show, war, the war games match ain't even the match I'm the most excited for. So in fact, let's get into it. If, if, if y'all are okay with that, let's, let's go ahead and get into this. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. First match. On, well, this one actually isn't on the show and we can discuss it shortly. Um, Pete Dunn is going to be at the show defending his, WWE United Kingdom Championship against Johnny Gargano. Now that is not going to be on the pre-show. It's not going to be on Takeover. It will air on NXT next week. Uh, the match is going to be fine. There's not a lot of story behind it, but there's no story uh, behind it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. None. Yeah, the, the whole story is uh, Pete so Dunne, a Pete Theme of the weekend, William basically. Regal. Theme of the weekend, more or less. Yeah, so. arguably, Down yes. Down, yeah. Carl. There's time for that. <laughs> You can save your rage for the Survivor Series yeah. preview, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Dunn and Gargano, I'm sure the match will be fine. I think if it, if they give it the proper time, which I don't know if they will, it could be better than Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn from Chicago. No, I, don't, I, I disagree with – well, I mean, I can understand why you would say that because you're more in-ring oriented. The match between Tyler and, and Pete Dunn was so great in, in large part to me because there was so much story behind it. The fact that Pete Dunne helped train uh, Tyler Bate and the fact that those three with Trent Seven, they are an actual team on the Indies, British Strong Style. 
and how Pete sold everybody out at the UK tournament to get the title shot and how Tyler got hurt because Pete jumped him and then Tyler beat Pete and was the only guy to beat Pete that entire time. And then Pete waited for months and months and months without getting a shot to finally get his shot. Like there was so much story behind that to add to how great it was that this could be five star in ring, but it won't be better to me because it's just two dudes wrestling to wrestle. That's but that's me. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, now you, you've got to yeah. consider when, when, when I sorry, Carl, when oh, I fine. say that, I mean, like I only saw like their like and I only saw their UK uh, tournament match and their Chicago match as just, you know, like, yeah, there was subtext there. But it was just Hey, they're wrestling to wrestle and there happens to be a title on the line. But that's how I perceive those matches. I get it. I get it. Yeah. But I mean, to, to me, I don't need I'm, I guess I'm, I'm one of those fans that I don't need. Uh, the, the company to tell me everything that they want me to know. Like, I'll, I can figure stuff out. You know what I mean? You no. Know. Yeah, no. sure. So, so I'm kidding. Uh, okay, okay. I'm about to say, like, I don't need I don't need Corey Graves to tell me that AJ Styles and Kevin Owens got beef because they had beef on the indies. Like, I know that. Right. So when I see them wrestle, I know there's a little more behind it than just a regular, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, a lot of that is for fans who aren't aware of that kind of shit, sure. casual. Yeah. Sure, but I don't need that because I mean, right. All three of us here are diehards. We're pretty into <clears throat> into the wrestling business, you know. So right. we host a podcast for Christ's sake. Yeah, we're, we're, we're tuned we in. Po- I thought we were just having a conversation. I'm the least knowledgeable of all of us. That's a fact on the, some of the stuff. Like yeah, I'm doing it, guys, you're... every week. I don't even know what wrestling is. What is this shit? Because you're, you're 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 a big dumb dummy. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, big, big dumb, dumb dummy head. Don't make me tell you about your chances of sacrifice if you keep it up. All right. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, real man. real quick on the Dunn uh, Gargano match. Kind of. I mean, I I don't keep up with NXT really that much anymore. Um, but I, I definitely uh, I like both guys a lot. So in terms of match quality, I'm definitely expecting it to be great. Uh, but I don't really have, I mean, obviously, as Rance put it, there isn't a story at all. It was just like kind of slapped together, I guess. Yeah. And as I said, you know, theme of the weekend, and we'll kind of get there. But um, that's really it. I mean, do you guys want to just predict it? I mean, I feel like we're probably all going to say the same thing. Pete Dunn's going to win, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be my guess. I would be really disappointed if Gargano went f- for two reasons. Number one, I want the UK title to stay a UK title. Like, they're, they're clearly trying to build a show around these guys. They're trying to do something for that branch of the world that doesn't get enough love from WWE. Uh, I appreciate that. And number two, that would kill the entire story arc that's been done since DIY split up. I, I need Gargano to can, continue to languish, if you will, until Ciampa makes his illustrious return and screws the shit out of him. It'll be right. glorious. Glorious. Well, there's, I mean, is there any way? I mean, I guess not. Now that I think about it, no, because it's not going to be aired until NXT. So I don't imagine we would see a Chompa return here, right? Not big enough. Not big enough. No. Yeah. I was just thinking, at first I was like, well, maybe if it was on the card, like if it was going to be, you know, one of the bigger matches that night. But it's considering yeah. it's going to air later. Maybe they not. might do it on an NXT taping later if, like, Chompa gets, gets healed up before TakeOver, maybe. What but, about like maybe like a mind game kind of thing, you know, like DIY music hits randomly or well, something? Well, they've been doing that. Match. Remember, that's how he lost to right. uh, C- Almost. C- Almost. That's, what I'm, that's yeah. what I'm saying though. You think they'll continue with that trend for this match? Maybe. Or? Well, Pete Dunn is Pete Dunn is a is a bit of a dick, so that's possible. Right, right, right. Yeah, just a thought, but yeah, I think we're all in agreement on the on the outcome. Oh, pretty uh, right. much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You shouldn't say that about Pete Dunn. He's just a baby, poor little fella. But um, <laughs> oh, so so that he's a penis. Oh goodness! Wow. Okay, so what I think might kick off the show. I don't know. It might go on second or third, but we're gonna talk about it now. We got Lars Sullivan, the freak, Lars Sullivan, against one Cassius. I swear to God, my name isn't stupid. Oh no! Oh, and. No. Uh, <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, that that match is um, it certainly exists. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a boss <laughs> fight. That's the best thing you can say about it. Uh, hey, let me. That's say how this. my parents raised me. 
let me say this. As a proponent for what they're doing in NXT, and probably of the three of us, the only guy that watches the shows, yes, it yeah. feels good to see a guy who's not one of these top indie dudes and just comes in. It's good to see a guy built from the ground up get a chance to shine. Because this dude, Lars Sullivan, formerly known as Dylan Miley, has worked his ass off to get to the point where he can hold a story. And Cassius is kind of the... I don't even want to call him the gatekeeper. He's kind of like the godfather of NXT where, you know, you need to get a good match. You need to be led to something. They're going to pull out Cassius because he's basically a trainer. You know, he's wrestled for damn near 20 years. He's been much a trainer that just still wrestles. He's 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 basically what Drew Gulak is for the for the Cruiserweights, you know. Uh, but they're going to beat the fuck out of each other. And that's just going to be entertaining. Yeah. But, yeah, see, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm with you. Like, these just these two massive beasts of men are going to beat the shit out of each other. And they're not so massive that they can't move around a little bit. Dylan Miley. Like, um, not Dylan Miley. Uh, what, what's Lars. The, what's, yeah. He does a fucking diving cab off the top rope. Right. That's what I'm saying. Jesus. It's, it's not, it's not Kane big show levels of big. It's just big beefy dudes. Like, yeah. you know, I'm going to call him Chris hero. Cause I'm sick of saying cash. Uh, <laughs> and we know hero can throw some fucking punches, man. He's going to yes. beat the fuck out of Lars. Elbows, punches, too. Yeah, elbows, elbows, kicks, I mean, knees. All the strikes, man. He's the king. So it's going to be, it'll be fun for how I hope it goes. I hope they get a little bit of time, uh, just to kind of watch the beating. I, I'm, I've, I've said this before, like, I, I don't like that kind of match all the time, but as long as it's, like, s- sitting on a card, you know, at some point, if I get that match just, like, once a pay-per-view, perfect. That's, like, the perfect amount of time, like, perfect amount that I need of just, like, this, yeah, we're going to kill each other kind of match. Here's why I like it for this for this card. One, I appreciate the fact that Lars has worked his ass off, and they're, sh- they're, they're basically giving him the ball and saying, young man, you, 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 worked hard here's your shot but more than anything you have the most brutal match that we had ever seen in war games between three teams that hate each other you have a truly truly uncallable fatal four-way you have was what could steal the weekend in the title match and then you got the best in my opinion we're gonna talk about that next the best, the best uh, psychological story we've seen in years in Alistair Black and Velveteen Dream. So you just need one match with six minutes of people beating the fuck out of each other. It's a yeah. good change of pace. Yeah. Which is why I don't know that it'll open. I don't, no, I don't think it'll. If you use it, if you use it as a change of pace kind of match, what, what I think else you stick would? it somewhere in the middle. Alistair Black Velveteen Dream. Yeah, I would. Alistair yeah, I was going to say I really do think that could be the opener mm-hmm. because it's, if you if you think of that similar to the formula of like that hot opener, does it get much hotter than that? And and you know and, what I mean. And name me one entrance in the company, not top the main roster or NXT, that that is gets you more hype. Sami Zayn few notwithstanding, than Alistair <laughs> Black. That entrance is the best entrance in the business right now. I've I've seen it once, but yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's yeah. Um, and then, bro, Velveteen Dream. So we gonna go ahead and move on. Well, no, we can't move on yet. Velveteen Dream, your boy gonna come out with fucking purple rainbows and unicorns, and Prince gonna come back for a day because he can do that. It's Prince, <laughs> right? It's okay. We'll get to that next. I'm so excited for that match. Okay. We'll get to that next. Official predictions, guys. I think we might be uh, we might be unanimous on this as well. I'm going to sure. start. I think Lars Sullivan is going to get the win. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Well, well deserved, Sweet. by the way. Well deserved. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I like his MP, MPD thing. Is he still? Does he still have that going on? What is that? Multiple personality disorder, sir. Oh, where he kind of uh. He, well, I don't think he'll. I don't. I think that was more of a ruse to continue to get matches. Oh uh, shit! More so than MPD. Uh, That's pretty cool, yeah. But so the the kind of the deal with him was that you keep putting me in the tag team and my tag team partner suck. He's been he's been unleashed, so he don't have to play the game no more. He's just all out crazy as fuck. So and yes. he and he apparently hates Dominican da- Venice Dominican. Venezuelan? What is No Way Jose? He hates dancing. Because every time he hears No Way Jose's music, he just beats somebody up. I miss you, No Way Jose. I miss you. A love letter to Jose. 
Oh, I miss him. Oh man. Come back yeah. soon, Boo. R R I P Jose, we, we miss you. <laughs> um next match on the card, sir, we've got Ronnie James Dio versus Prince. I mean, pardon me, Alistair Black versus the Velveteen Dream. That might actually work. <laughs> I can see that. Dio is is isn't necessarily black metal, but sure. Let's work with that. I like that. It was almost yeah. Ozzy Osbourne, but yeah. So I'm I'm gonna it. let okay. So for this match, I know Rance is really really hyped about it, and um, he pays more attention to it. Let's, I feel let's and I feel Rance, I know. Yeah, I was I was gonna say like I feel like because I haven't been keeping up with NXT that I haven't gotten the full. I need the backstory. If this is as hype as everyone says, I need yes. it. So we'll let Hype Rance lay it out. Rance. We'll let Rance lay it out for Rance, you. be the be the Paul Heyman for this match, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> My name. It, no, okay, never mind. Um, so from for for those people who like genuine stories, for people those people that like psychology behind everything done, this is a like kids should watch this match. Kids should watch this build and and and, and like follow it. So we all know the characters between the two. Alistair Black is kind of got this Zen-like, uh, you know, nothing's good, nothing's bad. I'm in the middle type, you know, uh, character. Um, and Velveteen Dream is basically he's he's Prince, right? Um, <laughs> so Alistair Black got a chance to finally have his first, uh, finally have his first promo. He talked about how he's been everywhere and every experience he's had, good, bad, or indifferent, he put on the skin from the heart in his throat to the devil on his back. Well, Velveteen Dream comes out of nowhere. Comes out, saunters his little ass to the ring and shit. And he tells him that, you know, you say you you say that, you know, that you got other stuff, but I don't believe you. Like, I just see I just see a hurt man. I just see uh I just see a person with a lot of pain. And, you know, you say you don't have a heart, but you do. You just got it in the wrong place. I'm talking about the heart in his throat. So, uh, Alistair Black stands back. And he black masses the fucking uh, mic out of his hand. So, Velveteen Dream, not to be outdone, drops on his knees. Kind of uh, leans towards him real suggestively and slides out of the ring backwards. It was the coolest shit. The crowd was like, oh! So... That turned into, which is the, the, the part I like about it, Velveteen, I mean, uh, Alistair Black would not acknowledge that Velveteen Dream existed. Wouldn't acknowledge him. Every time Velveteen Dream came out during his matches, Leo Rush made his uh, debut against Alistair Black. Velveteen Dream came out, beat the fuck out of him. Alistair Black didn't look at him, just kept looking straight. You're going to acknowledge me. I'm going to make you say my name. <laughs> Alistair Black just keeps looking. He keeps every Alster Black match that happens. So the next Alster Black match that happens, Velveteen Dream comes out of the crowd, puts on his vest, and watches the match while he's sauntering in his vest trying to get his attention. Dude's not looking at him. Black Mass is poor Raul Mendoza, sits down and does the pose. And uh, all all he's saying is, I'm going to make you say my name. You're going to say my name. And Alster kind of gives him one little look. He acknowledged him. So... The very next Alistair Black match he has, a couple weeks later, Alistair does his uh, entrance. And you know how when he gets down to the to the bottom of the ramp and he kind of stands and looks, well, you just see Velveteen Dream pop up out of the smoke behind him and <laughs> beats the shit out of him. I did see that. I yes. did see that. Yeah. And and puts him, in the, puts him uh, in the ropes and goes and continues to go at it. But the whole thing is about acknowledgement. It's about, you're not better than me. You're not going to disrespect me. Even though I look like this, I talk like this, I walk like this, you're not going to disrespect me. You're going to say my name. I'm going to make you say my name. And Alistair Black had a promo, one of the uh, pre-taped, where he said, you've been wanting me to acknowledge you. You've wanted this. Well, you know what? Now you got my attention. It is such a wonderful build to see it be built. It's it's beautifully done, beautifully done. I will I will add, um, if I'm not mistaken, hasn't haven't um, hasn't Alistair had promos where he's referred to as Patrick? Hasn't he had promos where he's done what now? 
referred to uh, the Velveteen Dream as Patrick? You know what? I don't remember that. He might have. But if he did. I think he has, if but he I has, could be mistaken. You know that's going to piss him off. Because he's not Patrick anymore. He's the Velveteen Dream. Yeah, <laughs> he's not trying to make NXT great again. He's the Velveteen, Velveteen Dream, yeah. Man, look. I, I really appreciate in wrestling hard work and people getting a shot. Getting, like, getting their shot. And Patrick has worked his ass off from tough enough to now. And that kid has got a gimmick and... If you if you if you don't I I just even if you don't care about the match, all I ask is you look up some of the build for this and you watch Velveteen Dream do the fucking top rope elbow. He gets about twenty feet high. Yeah, it's one it's... of the most beautiful. Th- People talk about Kyrie Sane's elbow, and we'll talk about her later. No, your boy is out macho manning macho man. Like it is the <laughs> most beautiful elbow I've ever seen. So yeah. Wow, that's uh. Wow, most beautiful elbow you've ever seen. My goodness, man. This is well, you obviously um, haven't is... seen my uh, psoriasis elbow. Oh, right yeah, now. well, that's coming Oh, up. God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is the match I bought the tickets for. Yeah, there you go. Well, though, well, Hell considering, yeah, yeah cons- I mean, that's cool considering and most people probably bought it because it's you know, war games, right? Absolutely. You were like, eh. Or even it's NAC TakeOver. Yeah, no, yeah. I needed to see yeah. Alistair Black versus Velveteen Dream. And Alistair Black is... We always sit down and think about or or talk about who could be the next guy to be that next main eventer, right? You know, it was Cena, it was Brian, it was Punk for a minute, it's Roman now. Who's next? Alistair Black could be that guy. Alistair yeah, Black could he, he could. Guy. Yeah, he could. I I um I like him. I mean, I I don't know. Like I I need to watch I need to watch more really cuz I don't like, you know, I'm not a huge I just don't watch NXT that much. Yeah. So I can't be like, oh, yeah, hey, Alistair Black is the future. I'm sure he is. Everyone's hype on him, you know. So that's fine. Shit, and um, think he's the president right now. He still ain't lost yet. Yeah, exactly. I don't I think that lends itself to our uh, prediction, probably. Unless Caleb wanted to add more about the match. Uh, uh No, I don't really have much to add. I mean, I know Alistair Black is solid, so uh, I'm sure the match will be fine. Or, or beyond fine, just depending on, you know, what, what happens. But, uh. Yeah, official prediction from this guy, Alistair Black will win. Yeah, I still think, I mean, he's undefeated. I feel like it's all building towards WrestleMania probably where he wins the title finally at some point. So I would say Alistair Black as well. That's kind of the way they go. Like, you don't lose forever until you win the title. And then you, if, if you're that guy yeah, and then you finally lose, I would say, yeah, he'll probably win the match. But a good showing from Velveteen Dream, I would imagine. Alistair Black wins the match. Velveteen Dream wins the night. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. That's fair. All right. Uh, List this in terms of interest. And next on there is uh, Andrade Cien Almas challenging for the NXT Championship against Drew McIntyre. As you know, my that, you know, amped for this one. But, I mean, I'm sure the match will be solid. But, you know, I'm just not a big Almas guy. Like, any TakeOver match he's had, I'm always like, eh, you know? Like, I wasn't a big fan of the Roddy one. Um, Gargano really? I was invested in, but I, li- I really like Gargano, so I think that had to be a big part of it, but right. I don't Well, know. I don't know, man. I mean, ah, that's hard for me to say. Like, I thought the, the Almas-Gargano match awesome. just in a vacuum by yeah, itself. Yeah, without yeah anything it was else very good. Standing, and I almost had a lot to do with that. Like, let's not... Sell the man short, you know what I'm well, saying? Well, we know that Almas can go. Almas at yes, one point was one yeah. of the five best guys on the, on, on, the, on the planet. We know he can go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I think your issue is you don't watch the shows because you don't see the character development. Um, okay. I can give you – damn, I feel, I feel like I'm taking all the time, but I'm the only guy that watches. Um, you have to have seen the character development of, of where he's gone from. He started off being – uh, the babyface who had moved past his, uh, moved past using the mask and was a lot cockier than we expected him to be, but it was cocky in a fun way. And then fans turned on him the very first night because they put him against Ty, right? And he goes on and goes on and goes on. He finally gets sick of not getting the respect and not getting the love he deserves. So he decides to say, fuck, I'm gonna just do me. And he becomes really him in the ring and out of the ring. Now the ring, 
he's just worried about these chicks, right? And starts he actually stops caring about matches because after the match, he's going to go out and he got four, five of them with him. Until Zelina Vega comes back, who was his, quote-unquote, business advisor back in Mexico. We all know that's Theo Trinidad. Shout out to Austin Aries. Austin um, Aries is misses, yeah. And she has given him a sense of purpose. So now, not only is he great in the ring like he's always been, and he's still a little cocky, but she is there pushing him, making him stay focused, and that's why he's gone from just that guy who just kind of floated from match to match to match to really, really becoming a serious contender and a guy, excuse me, a guy who can feasibly really take out Drew McIntyre. Now, for me, I the part of the match I'm not excited about is Drew McIntyre's title reign has been lackluster to me. He hasn't done anything of note. He hasn't done anything that I, I can actually visibly remember. He's a great in-ring wrestler. Well, I, I will say uh, in his defense, it has only been, what, three months, and they haven't had a takeover yet. So sure. in his, just in his defense there. Yeah, but see... What I guess I'm always a heel guy, but what what I guess what annoys Drew is that is your typical I'll fight anybody babyface. That's cool, but you got to bring more to the table than that. And I know he's he's capable of much more than that. You know what I mean? And to his credit, yeah. he's fought everybody. To his credit, yeah. And not um, only that, I mean like like you look at like a guy like uh, Bobby Roode who's boring as shit but he had such a great like don't start that he has i had to he had he had like a, he had like a thing though you know it wasn't like Drew Mack who's just like here i am Russell time like at least Bobby had like the glorious gimmick and the you know this is well, like my show kind of thing look at me deal you know well Drew had Drew a doesn't gimmick. seem to have that Drew like, had a gimmick when he when he was when he first signed to Impact he was kind of the he was kind of the 26, 2016 William Wallace, you know he was just a badass Scottish warrior, um, right? And I mean he kind of tapped into that at the takeover when he brought out the Scottish uh, band with him or the the bagpipe group or whatever, right? But uh, I, I guess I'm questioning: Can he lead a story as a babyface right now? We know in ring he can. We know from a story standpoint he's good enough, but it's just not doing it for me right now. And I, I feel like if anybody got an issue with this match from a build, it's not on Andrade's side because Lena Vega's been killing it. I think it's more on Drew's side. That's just my opinion. Right. Yeah, I mean, I don't like. I haven't. Um, once again, like you kind of are having to guide us through a lot of this. Me and Caleb don't watch a ton of NXT, so. Um, I think the lad when we get to the final two, I'll have a little bit more to say probably. Sure. But I, w- I would, I would say, you know, with Drew McIntyre, especially like I was a little, almost surprised when he won the NXT title. Uh, even though like, I, like, I just, I don't know. I actually thought maybe Alistair Black was going to be the guy to take it off rude, not Drew McIntyre. Um, so I was still kind of surprised by that. And Andrade, who I really like. I don't think he has a chance to win this match, by the way. But I do. Wow. Match. Yeah, I really. Well, I mean, I don't think like just I don't. I feel like we're all gonna say Drew McIntyre is gonna win. Like I feel like it kind of like that's once again it's kind of where we're the road we're going. Unless WWE or NXT whatever thinks that, um, you know, thinks that the the run is lackluster. But I don't, I don't see them doing doing that. They do it a little bit. Seems like they do it a little bit different in Orlando. Or whatever, so full sale. Pardon me. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the match should be good. I, Drew Max, great. Andrade can wrestle, obviously too. So, and once again, it's kind of like you said. You know, we don't watch, so we're not invested in the stories as much as you are. So it's hard to really give a synopsis, as it were. Okay. Well, <clears throat> okay. So, with that being said, yeah. So y'all both are on the Drew McIntyre bandwagon. Well, I am yes. for sure. I don't know about Caleb, but I'll definitely. I, say I agree. Yes, sir. With, I, with the caveat here that I would be totally fine with seeing Andrade win. I think it would be completely out of left field and cool. Um, and at least yeah. at the very least with him, he's got that longstanding relationship so far. He's been in NXT a while. He's got yes. the, the awesome valet and things like that. And you can count on him to be reliable in the ring, too. Of course, you can with Drew, too. But 
Um, yeah, but I'll still say I'll still say Drew because I feel like I feel like they're going towards you know trying to show unless Drew's coming straight to the main again really soon. I would still say I still say Drew. No, I don't think he is, man. I don't either. I don't either. Yeah, yeah I don't either. Drew Drew kind of signed to be what Joe, what Joe was, um, kind of that stabilizing force that you can right. have all these other guys come up. These guys, like, people might not know who Tommy End is, right? Alistair Black. But they know me. So I'm going to hold it down here for two years and kind of be that backbone until we can get somebody else in. And I go back and do my thing. Drew, I think Drew will win, but I, I think it's 55-45. And I say that because looking at, I'm looking at the next wave of challengers, right? So we have one heel that could challenge, which is Adam Cole, but he's embroiled in a lot of shit right now. But we got all these faces out here who feasibly could have a title match at any chance. Uh, um, Gargano, uh, Alster Black, right? I just think, so I think that there's a lot more stories that they could tell with Almas as champ, unless Drew does a turn. That's We're really getting into conjecture now. But I, I do think Drew wins this match. Uh, Claymore, I don't know where, and I, it's going to be a four star match. It's going to be great in the ring. Yeah. yeah I mean, I yeah, I'm pretty sure we're all agreed on that, but yeah, we're all yeah. agreeing on everything so far. That's one thing. I that's know kinda, it's unanimous. Well, that's yeah, one it's thing crazy. About, it's one thing about takeover sometimes, though. They're pretty because, because they're pretty predictable because you can kind of see where they're going with things. It's laid out a certain and that's way. That's not bad. Yeah. Well, it's not bad if you if you. I don't know. It's not bad if you're cool with that. I mean, like I still, that's one thing about NXT that I will all, that I, I think that's part of the reason why I don't watch it all the time is because if, if I feel like I know what's going to happen, I'm not as intrigued. You know what I mean? I need to feel like I don't know. Like I'm like, ah, yeah, but, throw but me for a loop, but NXT but I, is I, really I, about the ride. Yeah, it is. It is. And I, and I, I think that the next two matches though, kind of lend itself against what I was saying, you know, that I think there might be some, you know, uncertainty about the results, at least in this next one that we're going to talk sure, about. I absolutely. Think. Yeah. So. I guarantee we'll disagree on this next match. I guarantee. Yeah, it's a good, ch- good chance of that, yeah. Yeah, I think I might know who Rance is picking, but I'm not sure. Um, next match on the docket, the vacant NXT Women's Championship will be decided in a fatal four-way. We have got four challengers here. We have got Ember Moon. We have got Nikki Cross. We've got Kyrie Sane, and we've got the iconic Peyton Royce. You yeah. had a caller, right? You had a caller by her name. <laughs> yeah, uh, so let's let's talk about this. Um, this is kind of – I love this match. Um, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of layers to this. Yes. Okay? Let's just talk about the fact, first of all, the only reason the women's title is on the line here, as we all know, is because Asuka is no longer allowed to kick people's heads off. She's up nope. on the main roster. Nobody was ready for Asuka. Right. So, and that's what uh, happens when you're not ready for Oscar. Yeah, no, exactly. Shout out to Leo Rush. So, so let's kind of no. break. It, let's kind of break it down here. You've got four women that are kind of on completely like, different trajectories, right? Because they they did qualifying matches to get into this. So, sure. yeah. Ky- Kyrie Sane, uh, she won the uh, May Young Classic, right? So that's kind of like that's her deal. She's she's the she's the newbie of the four. Sure. So she she's you know trying to at least in terms of NXT she's trying to make her name for herself. You've got Ember Moon who has continued to have she's had a lot of opportunities and hasn't been able to kind of cash them in yet. Sure. So she's kind of, she's kind of like that. Uh, I don't know the best way to put it, but she's I wouldn't say underdog. She's like the she's like the Buffalo Bills of this. Okay. Situation. Okay. She's, okay. I'll give you one better. She's the Christian yeah. of NXT. Okay. Okay. And then you've got Nikki Cross who to me is almost like your like for lack of a better comparison. She's almost like your Dean Ambrose. Like, you don't know what you're okay. going to get out of Nikki. She's crazy. Sure, okay. yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I get Jack more so, but yeah. she She's a, a viable threat because of the fact that she's so, like, unpredictable. Crazy. Yeah. And then you've got Peyton Royce. And the thing I love about Peyton is, you got Billy. one, she's got Billy Kay. Yep. You know what I mean? And, and she's obviously, of the four, she's the one that you're like, okay, she should get her ass kicked. You know what I mean? Like, cause she's in there with Kyrie Sane, she's in there with Ember Moon, she's in there with Nikki Cross. Like, what chance does she have when she's got the equalizer to some degree? Yes. So yep. I think, like, you've got four completely different character arcs 
and that they're all like it's like an explosion you know what i mean like they're all just they're all headed in this collision course yeah this, this is a very interesting to me maybe other than war games just because it's war games this is the match i want to see the most is the women I'll- and i love that like i'm so happy about that because i've been so disinterested with the main roster females lately, that yeah. NXT has given me something where I'm like, hell yeah, man, I want to see this. I will do you one better, Carl. Yeah, Here's go ahead. Why I'm why I'm most inter- interested in this match? You've got that second ring in there. You know, at some point, at least two of these challengers are going to go into that second ring. Right, right, right. <laughs> I didn't think about that. That's a very good point. I'm just I'm saying, man. Like that's like you got to consider anytime a, an arena has a multi ring setup. At some point on the card. They got to go into that second ring, right? And this has got to be that match. And man, I, um, you know, I'm definitely I'm very interested in it. It's very much all four of these women are wild cards. Anyone could win. You know, Kyrie saying she is truly undefeated in the company. You know, won the May Young Classic. She could continue that streak. Ember Moon could finally close the deal. We don't know. Yeah. Nikki Cross, she's always a wild card. She is like the again, like the Dean Ambrose or like the Cactus Jack of you right. know modern day like female wrestlers you know but um and of course you know peyton royce has billy k the equalizer so i mean i am uh, very excited for this match um i'm really hoping peyton royce is gonna win and uh you know rance do you do you have much to say on this man do you you want to you want to get your two cents in sir i go ahead um i don't get nikki cross well i mean I, i i i definitely i get the gimmick I don't get why she's so loved. She's not really that good to me. Um, and this is no disrespect to her because I know clearly she got signed. She's she has talent. She is and she's made her she's shown herself to be a very uh excellent character actor, even though I think she overacts a bit much, but that plays into it. Yeah. It's a little yeah. much. But it plays into it. She's she's bashing insane, right? It plays into it. Right. But from an in ring perspective, uh, speaking to what my boy Caleb likes, she doesn't very she doesn't show herself to be very very good. It's a lot of flopping and jumping and brawling and you know and I'm not saying she can't go, but I just don't see the where the love affair comes from with her. Uh, but then you have a person like Ember Moon, and I have a bias because I, I don't I mean I don't know her, but I know her. Uh, who and she's has, black. Okay, there's that too. <laughs> there's that too. Oh, uh, come on, man. Come on, I'm just fucking with him, but we I, know. But I, I wasn't thinking about that. But why the hell not? Um, <laughs> but Ember has shown herself on a consistent basis to be equal to Oscar, right? Right. Both right. matches, Oscar had to cheat to beat Ember. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yep. Um. Uh, now she's not better, but equal. Yeah. But she doesn't get anywhere close to the love that Nikki does. So, from a personal standpoint, that kind of bothers me. It doesn't affect the match. I think I, I kind of think it's a gimmick thing. The, 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 well, the Ember, gimmick is trash. I'm, I'm a wolf. Like, ugh, it's, it's like, not. Okay. It's not that she's a wolf. It's it. You you have to know. You have to know her. Right. She she genuinely Carl. is into the larping, the cosplay. That's that's cosplay. Her life. Yeah. That's her every. That's Carl. Her life. Well, I do know that somewhat because she talks a lot of that Carl. stuff on online. What? It's not wolf. It's wolf. Get it together, sir. Shut up, fool. Okay. You stupid. Um, but, Hell yeah. But going into the match, these type of matches kind of lend themselves to either the toughest competitor or the smartest. Yeah. The smartest in this match is easily Peyton Royce. Yeah. Easily. It is. It is. Here's the thing. Um... Because you said Ember is Asuka's equal to some degree. She's yeah. shown herself to be in ring uh, at least. a viable, worthy opponent of Asuka. One of the only one, I believe, that Asuka had to cheat to beat. Absolutely. Um, so, but of course, in this situation, <clears throat> you don't have to be pinned to win. Like, you don't have to be, like, if you're not, if you get, if you don't get pinned, like it doesn't matter, you know what yeah, I mean? Like one fall, yeah. Yeah. So even though she might be the best of the four, yeah, maybe matter. maybe you argue argue Ky- Kyrie Sane, but 
if you, if you think Ember's the best of the four, it doesn't matter. Yeah, like you said, I mean, it just it, it, none of this matters because we've seen four like Fatal Four Way, one of the best four ways, you know, with Cesaro and Miz, and I can't, you know, the other two from uh, yeah, Battle, those Battle other two, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And I can't remember. All, yeah. Sorry, I just can't remember all the names. I'm not trying to be a dick. I uh, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. It's for the record. It was Cesaro. Top, right? It was Zayn. It was Miz, and it was Owens. But yeah, right. Yeah, and who and who won? Right, the, the smartest Miz won. Yeah, smartest guy in the room, of course. Um, and and so we might actually all end up agreeing on this because I got yeah. I kind of get the feeling yeah, we're all we leaning are. that way. <laughs> um, so let's just and unless you wanted to add more, Caleb, I think we could probably go ahead and jump on. I don't have much to add, man. Yeah, you know, uh, Caleb, I want to give you some credit here because I was just going to say Peyton would win, right? Like she'd win with the help of Billy Kay. But now that you mention it with that second ring, that feels like where she's going to do it. You know what I mean? Like it's going to get separated somehow. Or maybe, yeah, maybe the other two go into the second ring. And right. yeah. And Billy Kay is going to help her win this match, by the way. But it's going to be where they're kind of like something's happened to get them all separated out and. And, and, I don't think she's and, gonna. I don't. The thing is, I think she's gonna pin Ember Moon. Yeah, like I, Billy's yeah. gonna Billy's gonna take the Eclipse, and then Payne's gonna come and she's gonna. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't think it's gonna be Kyrie Sane because I th- I do think they want to protect Kyrie Sane because she's the next one I think. And then Nikki, you know, I don't I don't think I mean Nikki's to me she's just kind of there. She's not like I, she's the, of the four. She's the one I would not expect to win at all. So if they threw me for a loop, okay, that's cool. But I really do think it'll be Peyton Royce here. I, I think, like, I just love Peyton. I mean, not only, is she, you know, I'm just in love with Peyton, but oh I just love God, yeah. I love the iconic duo, man. I love those two. They're outstanding. I was yeah. I was going for – I wanted them to do the, the Australian stable before Emma was released. You know, yes. Like, like I, I just love Peyton and the way they work together. Just They're like the mean girls of WWE or NXT, you know what I mean? So they're and, actually – they're a better version of Lay Cool than Lay Cool was. That's a great example. I didn't even think about Lay Cool. You know, well, they're, but, they're, so the beautiful people started it. Lay Cool yes. made it popular. Right. And Billy and Kay are better at it because they're really lifelong best friends. Right. So I, that's that's where I'm going with this, guys. I think Peyton's going to find a way. And I love – I'm always – I'm all about whoever finds a way that doesn't deserve it. Yeah. That's like my – that is like my <laughs> – that is my Not thing, man. If you, if you were the heel that does not deserve it and you find a way – you are in, I and mean, so I, I do think. So it's that's pain. so that's where the gender love comes from. I finally sure. the case has finally been cracked. I get and, it, sir. And also, it's where it comes with the Miz because he's the same way. A motherfucker don't deserve to win any matches, and he wins them anyway because he's smarter than the competition. Amen. Hell yeah. Amen. Intelligence is a skill, bro. Intelligence is. is a skill. I'm just saying. So, official prediction from Carl Peyton Royce, and I'll be so excited. I'll mark out if she wins. I hope she does. Official prediction from Caleb. Finally, for the first time in over two years, NXT will have a true heel as women's champion when Peyton Royce wins the match. By the way, y'all know who Peyton Royce's boyfriend is, right? (laughs) We all did. We all just did the 10. You guys can't see it, but we all just did the 10. Yeah. Shout out to my boy Todd Dillinger. Uh, A perfect 10 got a perfect 10. Uh, Oh, yeah. But yeah, I think I think I think Peyton wins. But I will say this: if Peyton doesn't win, it's gonna be Ember. They're gonna it's kind of gonna be a thank you type deal. But yeah, it's gonna oh, be Ember. Oh, that's one thing I did oh, leave out. in Houston. I forgot about that, dude. Yeah. Well, that's why she's well, not gonna win. Well, technically, <laughs> for, let, 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 let's be real. Ember's not from Houston. She's from Dallas. She just okay. came here. <laughs> she's in town. Yeah. That's a big fucking difference, dog. You I, I will understand. say this. I kind no, of felt, I yeah, there's a five-hour difference there, but still. I, want, yeah. I wanted to say this real quick before we move on to the last match. I don't think, and this is no disrespect to Ember because I think she's awesome as a talent. I don't think she's actually probably going to win that title in NXT ever. I think she will go to the main mm-hmm. roster before. And I feel I'm not saying the the ship has sailed, but I, I do think that like I felt like maybe her arcs called for her to one day take out Oscar maybe, and then. When Oscar yeah. moved on, when Oscar got hurt, and it was like, okay, fuck this, we got to get her up. You know what I mean? I kind of feel like, you know, Ember's like, what is the the term you used with with Chris Hero earlier, gatekeeper? Yeah. Like Ember yes. kind of feels like she could be in that role on her way up to the main roster at some point, maybe. And and that's fine. Yeah, that's fine for me yeah. because oh, yeah. 
Sure. Like, that's only, like, as long as she's not, like, being beaten like a drum or whatever, yeah, right, it's right. only gonna, it's only gonna put Simpy on her when, yes, yes, when she finally, yeah. when she finally wins, like, a women's title, you know, wherever it, it is, Raw, SmackDown, doesn't matter, yeah. people are gonna pop, because, like, yeah. Becky Lynch waited, like, what, two some odd years, something oh, like forever. that, to finally Lord, win a women's ever. title, yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was fucking awesome, in my opinion. I will say this, though, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have agreed with you or believed that until all these women got called up for the May Young because Mercedes Martinez might be the most talented woman in the, in the company. But right. Bianca Belair has shown herself to be probably one of the quickest learns we've seen. She's she's Roman Reigns-esque in terms of how good she's gotten fast enough. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but there's so many that's just wait. Dakota Kai, uh, Carl's girl. There's yeah. so many just sitting there. Carl's bro. girl? Well, yeah, you, yeah both, of, both of y'all got a thing for the for the new Shut up, Caleb. Team kick. Whatever. Yeah, hell yeah. But Unless there's... your name's Finn Balor, then get the fuck off my oh, TV screen. Go ahead. <laughs> but there's 20 <laughs> girls ready to come up and take Ember's spot. So then I can see them going and say, you know what? SmackDown, you need an extra chick? Here goes it. I can see it. So yeah, man. Yeah. All cool. right. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we've uh, we've droned on about these other matches for quite some time. And the main event of this TakeOver special the titular match, titular war games. They <laughs> titular, yeah. But uh, that's a big word there for you. That's uh, that's more than two syllables. So uh, yeah. I'm not used to anyway, that. Anyway, they've <laughs> not used to that from Caleb. No. Um, <laughs> here we've got they've they've modified it a little bit. First off, you know we got the two rings, we got the cage, but there's not going to be a roof. Yes. Well, as has been said, that's because. Of all the flippy guys, they gotta they gotta be able to jump off the top of the cage. You gotta do their Eric flippy Young, shit. Yeah, Eric Young has to do a dive. Yeah. Um, well, I was thinking more along the lines of uh, one know. of the authors of Pain. Yes, yes. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Probably. I knew oh, it. Probably Rezar or whatever. Rezar, yeah. <laughs> Maybe Paul Ellering's gonna get in there and do a dive. We don't know. He's gonna be too busy being in the shark cage. Oh God! <laughs> not the not the shark cage. Get away. Yeah. Oh man. Well, uh, anyway, let's discuss it. Let's look. And we've this is not a four on four. This is trios here. I love me trios action. Yes. We have got the undisputed era, or as I want to call them, as a something a guy who kind of leans as an ROH mark a little. Adam Cole and Red Dragon, or Red. Uh, pardon me, Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, oh, and Kyle O'Reilly. Red Pardon Dragon Bebe. That's that's the real name. Red, Red Dragon Bebe. Red Dragon. No, no, no. Adam Cole and the Bebe's. I, I already established this. Okay, his, his, his name is his name is O O O O'Reilly. That's his name. That's pretty bad. I don't I don't, I don't know if y'all have heard that's that pretty bad. or not. That's that, pretty that, that's bad. No, I have, and that's funny you mentioned that because that apparently was a thing when he wrestled in the Indies. They do the mm-hmm. O really? O O. Bradley, and then they say wrestling. Yeah, I did Funny not know shit. that, and that um, I'm feeling like I'm smart, so it's fine. pretty bad. You, you do somehow. Uh, Sanity, the trio of uh, Big Day, or pardon me, Killian Dane, Eric yeah. Young, and Alexander Wolf, the current NXT Tag Team Champions, although the titles are not on the line. No. And the authors of Pain, Akum and Razar, and their partner Roderick Strong, the most boring man in wrestling. Whoa, 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 whoa! Kudos to NXT because they are their little vignettes for him. They, they, they got him some sippy for me, man. I'm they did. I'm telling you, yes, they've done wonders <laughs> for that dude because he's boring hell as yeah. hell. But they have made him actually in, interesting to the slightest bit. It's amazing. Yes. Yes. So okay. yeah, this like this is gonna be interesting, man. I'm, I'm really like, man, I am ready for this match. And there's so much so, real oh hatred in between these teams, it seems like. It's like they yeah. all really – like, it feels like it's worth war game. Like, they all hate each other. <clears throat> yeah. I, um, I'm i kind of thinking, like, I'm just th- – for me, like, I'm not as invested in the, the team as much as I'm invested in the match. Okay. So, like, the specific the, – what we're getting. You know, like, if you haven't ever seen a war games match – Jesus Christ, you need to go, like, if you don't have the network or whatever, get on YouTube, find it. You need to go back and watch these, man, because this shit is fun. Like, if anything, if anything, just if you don't care about the three teams at all, 
just know that this is going to be fun as shit. Like, seriously, like, this is the kind of stuff, and I'm so, like, thank you, Triple H, okay? The GOAT. Thank you, Triple H. Thank you, Hunter. Right. Thank you, for, Paul. For, we appreciate it. For bringing it. this back. Shaking, by the way. Thank you for bringing this back. And I'm really looking forward to this. I don't have a ton to say about the story. I just, I, I really, I mean, I like it once again, the same deal. Really, the, the women's match is the only one that I was compelled in terms of storyline, I guess. But, it, but for the match, this is like, you know, this should be a blast. I'm just looking forward to it. The story is pretty simple. <clears throat> Sanity. And, and it all stems from take over Brooklyn. So, right. Uh, Sanity and Arthur the Pain basically had beef because they wanted to see who's the better dudes. Right. Fine. I get that. Sanity won a war. That match was a war. Yeah, it was. And then Red Dragon comes out. Adam Cole makes his debut. Beat and the shit out of him. They beat the shit out of him. Yeah. And it just literally is who's better. And yeah. the Roger Strong thing is kind of the the thread, right? That you can pull and yes. unweave everything. Because Roddy's only in it because uh, Ring of Honor fans. Uh, Roddy goes back with Adam Cole. And cut. Before I say that, let me say this. The interesting thing about the Undisputed Era is all three of those guys really, to a certain degree, hate each other. But they're working. Like, one of the most beautiful, one of the most brutal feuds I've ever seen play out was Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole. They tried to kill each other. They tried to kill each other. Like, they hated each other. But, yeah. and they've even talked about this in their promos, they realize that they need each other to make the statement they're trying to make or, quote-unquote, shock the system. Well, throw Roddy in there because Roddy's nickname was Mr. ROH, right? Right. So that's the thread here that makes it interesting that he was thrown in with the authors because the authors needed a third. Well... Uh, yeah, go ahead. They're, like, they... Um, Undisputed Era did recruit him and they he tried rebuffed to. them. They tried to, yeah. Yes. Yes, and he rebuffed them and then, you know, I didn't... Either he came to Authors of Pain's defense or Authors of Pain came to his defense. I'm not sure which happened. I don't remember. I I I missed that particular segment because I didn't I didn't I I was the last three NXTs. I didn't get a chance to watch all of them. I just watched bits and pieces. So I, yeah. I don't remember. I just remember I remember seeing the brawl. I don't remember seeing who came out first or not. I want to say Roddy came out and the Authors came out. Yeah, to Roddy help. saved them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, actually, yeah. What? Well, what didn't it happen after the Cole Strong match? Because Cole uh, and Strong had a match. No, it was the week before. You're right. It was the week before yeah, was the week, when San, when Sanity fought. Strong came out with the band. Yeah, yeah, and he had it on, and then he acted like he was with them, and they threw it away. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> For those of you that don't watch NXT, we just gave you a nice uh, synopsis there of the feud. And Thanks, they, guys. Yeah, yeah. No but problem. I, I think the interesting thing about this match is, is Roddy really going to be down with the authors? I think a lot of people are expecting Roddy to turn on the authors and join up with Undisputed. From a storyline perspective, and Caleb and I had a conversation about this earlier, it makes yes. sense because Roddy's kind of in that disgruntled babyface role where he can't win, he can't beat, beat the top guys. It couldn't beat Bobby when it mattered. He couldn't, he couldn't beat Drew when it mattered. Um, there's nowhere else to go but up for him. He's kind of in that second tier. Um, and he's with so much emphasis being put on his family. What's more, what's better to keep losing in good old tr college try? Yeah. Or, to be able to sleep at night. Yeah. Or, or, yeah uh, who cares to, about that? to get the winner's purse, you know, that's what, yeah. yeah what matters more? Absolutely. He's, uh, he's the, uh, Sammy Zane. I was going to say the same he's thing. In nowhere. As I mean that's Gargano, but yeah. Yes. Well, no, I'm just mean like that. That that fire. That angle, fight, yeah. Will he see the light and be yes. like, wait a minute? Absolutely. Like, yes. Okay. What am I doing here? You know, I gotta fucking do fix something. Absolutely. So yeah, that, that's that's where I get that from. By the way, Kyle O'Reilly walks like Gollum from the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> that's the most awkward walking motherfucker. Smeagol. What he does with his it's just so weird. How he's, you know, it's just, I just want to point that out. So official predictions. Uh, why do I feel like we're all going to make the same choice? Yeah, I know, right? 
Uh, Undisputed uh, Era would be my choice here. Undisputed Era with the caveat that Roderick Strong, right. Strong does turn his back on the Authors of Pain. Right. To be fair, they need this match. They just got there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Of they course. need the Yeah, win. for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. And then the Authors are headed up north. You think so? Think oh, yeah. They only came back for this match. Okay. I'm sure Wait, that's fine. So that's fine. You mean, to t- you mean to tell me that just because the Authors of Pain don't win this match, they're going to get released and have to go fight up in Canada at Impact? What? Well, why do I want? Why do I suddenly want to see the Authors of Pain and the Bar beat the god out of each other on a, on a, on a random it's Raw? Gonna or a it's going to happen. Golly, um, that would be so happen. brutal. But 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 think about it. So Triple H is a very very smart man. Triple H plans NXT way ahead of time, unlike yeah. the main roster, right? So I'm pretty sure he thought about. Uh, I'm pretty sure he thought about War Games. I'm pretty sure he realized the four on four with him with him match because they don't have any anybody like that. So let's bring the authors back because they got beef for sanity. Because remember they were gone for a really long time for no reason. Yeah. And they were never hurt. They were just gone, right? So what other reason would they come back but for War Games? And then I see you. In fact, to give more credence to that, weren't the authors supposed to be the guys attacking Fandango and Tyler Breeze? I I always thought it was... I always thought it was Harper and Rowan. At one point, Bludgeon, it was supposed to be the authors. Bludgeon, At one point, it was supposed to be the authors because Harper was still in the middle of, of his face of his baby face push when it started. When Fashion Files started, it was supposed to be the authors at first, and then it turned into putting Harper and Rowan back together. But yeah, yeah, it's 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 the unspeakable error, absolutely. Two B. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. Uh, so guys, that is NXT Takeover. War games. I almost said Houston. Um, <laughs> in Houston. And again, I reiterate, the the American Wombat, Rance Morris, is going to be in attendance. Now, another we're gonna, event. We're going to work on that nickname, but sure. Yeah, we're going to get it over eventually, man. Like, I'll be damned. I'm going to gender mahal the shit out of this, man. I tell you. How let me if you see me. I'll be in a long sleeve purple, uh, long sleeve purple thermal and probably an Arizona fitted. How let me if you see me. Is it cold in yeah. Houston right now? It's cool, but that's just that's normally the shirt I wear to okay. wrestling shows. I was just curious. I was just, I was just curious. I don't know what the temperature is out there. I try to wear I try to wear the same things so people can remember me. I got I don't know what the tempy is, so I can't have simpy if I don't know the tempy. Oh just fuck move on. you, Carl. Move on. Next. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Let's okay. go. We gotta move on okay. to the big show. We've already spent an hour on takeover. Well, well, it's the big show. We got on yeah. the pre-show. We've got Damn. Enzo Amore defending his cruiserweight championship against Kalisto. Um, can this feud be over? Like, God, can seriously. They, can they can they book in this feud? I don't care who wins. I like if you want to go with Kalisto, whatever, fine. But can you book in this feud? Let's 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 do this, okay? I I um I have a lot like I have a, a lot of negative energy about Sunday. Not because I don't think the pay-per-view itself in terms of quality wrestling will be good, right? But I just I have this uh this thing about this brand warfare stuff and the the lack of builds for a lot of this stuff. And it's weird because Enzo Amore and Kalisto is a match I also don't care about, but at least they kind of have a story, and I'm just like, I feel like a big hypocrite right now. So let's put it this way. I want Enzo to win. I hate Enzo Amore, but I want him to win because I hate Kalisto more. Um, Kalisto is... He's Kalisto. What does he really bring to the table? Honestly, good, I just want someone to tell me. Lucha good thing. Lucha things. Good yeah, lucha thing. yeah, <laughs> yeah he brings good Lucha things. Enzo Amore should win because this ultimately needs – Enzo Amore needs, should not drop that title until he goes and wrestles the GOAT, Drew Gulak. Mustafa Ali. Oh, pardon me. Um, <laughs> he need, like, That's... You know what I'm saying. How you Kalisto, doing? I'm doing fine. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Kalisto, 
needs to lose. Okay, and that's it. That's it. I like the story. Like I'm done. I'm done with Enzo and Kalisto. I'm done. Lucha, lucha, lucha. Whatever. I'm done. I, no but, more. Uh, Go ahead. Someone else talk about this match. Simple, this match. simple request that I have for uh, whoever books the cruiserweight division. If it's Vince, whoever, I don't care. Um, please, I'm, I'm, I'm begging you. I, I'm, I'm praying to the good Lord above that if Enzo wins, please, please give me a Mustafa Ali title program. That'd be awesome. Although I won't be hurt if it doesn't happen. And if Kalisto wins, please give me Kalisto and Drew Gulak. Please. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. Like, it's got to be one or the other, right? Yeah, yeah. you would think. Yeah. yeah. Drew Gulak doesn't deserve that type of negativity in his life. <laughs> Kalisto's trash, bro. Like, I, 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 like, the dude's probably cool in real life, but Kalisto's, sure. gar- like, Kalisto's garbage. Like, Kalisto's garbage. Well, well, okay, in trash. fairness, you don't like Lucha. No, 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 no. This, this supersedes my hatred of Lucha. Like, I... <laughs> He like him and Italia just need to go away. Well, like, in, a, in a hole, away from everybody. I'm gonna disagree with you on Italia, but we will we will come to terms on an agreement with Kalisto. He's trash. Because like, there's no there's I, no I redeeming cannot, quality yeah. he has. There's nothing. So shout out to Enzo, a guy who actually gives makes me give a fuck about what he does. I don't if good, bad, or indifferent. I care when he's when he's on. Yeah. Let me let me let me put it to you this way. My cousin doesn't even watch wrestling no more. He was that hard with me back in the day. He didn't watch it no more. Every time Enzo's on, he stops and pays attention because he's like, I hope this dude gets his, the shit beat out of him. Well, let me tell you, and this is interesting. It's interesting you say that. Uh, when Enzo and Cass first came around, my old man was all about Enzo. My dad's 60. Okay? <laughs> and, and not only that, but the, the very few times my wife has watched wrestling, mm-hmm. she like Enzo is someone she notices. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she's like, yeah. Like I mean, I'm like, and I tell her, I'm like, he ain't worth the shit in the ring, but she don't care because Doesn't she's matter. an outsider. Yeah, my character. She catches, he catches her attention. Absolutely. So I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with so, you. Caleb, do you have anything that you want to add to this? Because I know we want to move. Please. Um. Too much but time. Add, on match. add if you want to. Too much time. I, I don't. On match. Again, I already said what I had to say. Please yeah. book in the feud. Yeah, you don't. You don't care like the rest. Yeah. Of it. Okay. Awesome. So, official predictions. Caleb, go ahead first. Go first. In, uh, Enzo wins. France. Or Enzo retains. Pardon me. France. Enzo wins, but we all lose. <laughs> uh, second that. Third that. Enzo wins. We all lose. So, hopefully we pick a different winner at some point on this show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, yeah. It's coming. It's coming, I think. This it's shit's going to be chalk, man. I, I, kn- I don't know. No, it okay. won't be chalk forever. Next match, I uh, decided to put in the chat because I was like, oh, let's put it in there. We have got the Intercontinental Champion versus the U.S. Champion. We have got the Miz versus Baron Corbin. Um, This is a feud that's been almost entirely built on Twitter, Mm -hmm. oddly enough. And I love the unique nature of it, to be honest with you. Um, Although I know the match is probably going to be trash, but uh, oh well. Um... Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. You don't have anything to say, do you? It will. Uh, it, will e- it will exist uh, again. Yeah, like I like I'm I said you. about the matches, it will exist. Yeah. Well, 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 the cool thing about this build is when you say it's the Twitter build, these are two guys who are really good at Twitter. Yeah. Like that, like, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like of course, Baron got himself in trouble maybe on Twitter, but Baron is still good at Twitter. Okay? He takes that shit too yeah. seriously. Yeah, he, he takes does. Twitter too and, seriously. And Miz is very good on Twitter. Miz is very good in general. Yeah. Uh, in, in terms of you know running. His mouth. Hey, real quick, I do want to say I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you, Carl. No, no. Um, go ahead. Kudos to I don't know who who does the you know the who says oh hey do this I don't know if it's Vince I don't know if it's Triple H whoever tells Baron Corbin hey do these specific things to get people to hate you. You're doing a damn good job because here's the thing. <laughs> having seen Baron Corbin on up, up, down, down, having listened to him on talk is Jericho. Very he's really fucking guy. cool. Yeah. yeah. He's really relatable too. Yes. And, and I see him on TV and I, yeah, I hate him, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, what that should tell you yeah, a lot about, not only what that should tell you a lot, not only about whoever's booking him or telling him or helping him, but it should tell you a lot about him that he's able yeah. that he's putting that yeah. work in to be someone you genuinely dislike. And really, 
it's kind of the same way with the Miz, but we're so used to the Miz being this way now that we love him for it. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. And that, well, that yeah. so that's kind of interesting. Miz is, Miz has reached that. Uh, I don't want to say John John Cena status in 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 the, in the point that he's got the tenure. The tenure. That, yeah, yeah, that he's sure. in that respect phase now. Yeah. Yes, he is. Um, and it's why, like, I actually think the ship has sailed on him being a world champ at some point, which makes he'll, me he'll sad. He'll win one more. He'll win one more. He'll win I one hope more. so. Oh, but go you. ahead. Go ahead. I know you want to talk about the match a little bit. So well, it's not so much about the match. I just want to say this. Um, I know a lot of people were having problems with the build of the card and how it's Raw versus SmackDown, this, that, and the other. Um, and then spe- specifically this match because there's no discernible build on TV and it's heel versus heel. But I think the thing that they're trying to accomplish is that they're trying to show that there's no heel and no face. What the good guy or the bad guy depends on what show you like better. So if you like Raw, you're going to pull for Miz. If you like SmackDown, you're going to pull for Corbin. So good, bad, or indifferent doesn't matter. It just depends on what, what show you're behind. So, right. But what if, I, what if I like the Kevin and Sammy show? Then, then who do I root for? You root for SmackDown Tuesday or when, when they show up because they won't be on this card, at least not in a match. Right. They're going to be on TV, but we'll talk about that oh, later. Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll make an appearance. They uh, might, yeah, there's but, a chance, yeah. But I will say this. This I don't want to say this is make or break for Baron, but this is this is a big this is a bigger opportunity for him than fighting Cena was. Because I think so. Because that was just a throwaway match to throw on the card to have John Cena on the card. It wasn't a big deal. This you're representing your brand with the second biggest championship against a guy who has shown himself to possibly be the MVP of the company in the past three hundred and sixty five days, right? Yeah. Yes. And you you're giving a match that's gonna be a big deal with no real with no real uh story and you guys don't seem to mesh. If you can come out of this with something enjoyable, I really think you've shown the company that you're a guy that they can build around. If this becomes if this is just garbage, if this is uh you know, JBL and Jackie Gator versus Trish and Chris Nowinski type shit, this is terrible. Nobody's gonna blame Miz. Miz has been wrestling yeah, for, for twelve. Yeah, years. Yeah, is, of course not. If this is like John Cena versus Baron Corbin, they're not gonna blame the Miz. I'm just saying. Absolutely yeah. no. So and and I think that will hurt his prospects long term. He can build it back, but he's this this is really his chance to really shine. I think. That's fair. Yeah. So yeah. Let, let's prediction move time. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Caleb. Oh shit. Uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna say since I guess Miz might be the lesser of the two evils amongst like the our fans evils. of our ilk, <laughs> that that Baron Corbin is gonna win. I'm gonna take uh, Baron Corbin. Also, fuck you guys, man. Well, well, there's fuck a reason for this. There's you're Randy this. Jackson. I'm Simon no, no. Cowell, and you're Randy Jackson. Ugh. I'm not. I'm not taking Baron for the same reasons Caleb is. I'm taking Baron because. Okay, so here's one thing about about Baron, right? When he loses matches, he loses his fucking mind. Yes. But in this respect, if he loses this match, the only retaliation he can get is post-match. There will be nothing past this. There will be nothing else. There will be no more Miz feud after. There is no Miz feud. Sure. So he's not able to turn around like a kid with Sin Cara or Sami Zayn and sit him, put him in a stretcher. You know what I mean? So yeah. I feel like, and the Miz doesn't need this at all. No. Really, he's fine. He's the Miz. He 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 loses for a living, you know. Unless he unless he you know cheats to win, he usually loses for a, for a living. I, so I will think because there's nothing past this that Baron needs it more in terms of you know he needs to have a good showing. He needs you know those kind of things uh, to help build up because the Intercontinental Title is is built, baby. The prestige is there right now, in my opinion. The U.S. title has been flou- it's kind of floundered. Even with a- even when AJ had it, it really it well, it didn't feel like a big deal, really. Even though it was kind of supposed to, you know. And I'm not that's not AJ's fault, by the way. I'm just saying I didn't I didn't feel like it was. So I'm gonna say Baron wins. I, I think he needs it. Um, if you believe in that kind of thing, I just think that going past this because there is no feud between these two, but ultimately Baron will get the nod on this match. What do you think, Rance? I'm very upset that both of you guys you picked who I was going to pick, so I'm going to change my pick. <laughs> oh, you're being spiteful. But, but no, there's a reason why. There's a reason why. It's not just be, it's because you guys picked him, but there's a reason. 
I think that Miz is going to be the babyface of this match. And if you've been paying attention to the build, Corbin keeps talking about Maurice. Well, Maurice has been away. But today, Miz was on TRL and Maurice was there with him. So she's traveling. I think we might have Maurice signing and I think Maurice might slap him to kind of get the don't talk about me type shit. And Miz wins. So I'm going to say Miz. Okay. Full disclosure, well, he was going to say Corbin, but he's tired of everybody predicting. This is ridiculous. This, yeah, it really is. It, is it really ridiculous. is. Well, you know, it's like uh, it's like women that flock together. Their their cycles will sync up. I Whoa, think our predictions. I think our predictions. Analogy. Calm down, calm down. Okay, guys, calm down. It's the human body, but no, that's our predictions analogy. have started to like like sync up. I don't know. Full, full disclosure: last week I got shit on for alienating the fan base because I was being an asshole. Both of them, me and Rance, both got kind of crap talk because we were. Going hard on fans. Hold on. This as week, as this do I week, a as do I give a this fuck? week, Caleb is going after the ladies. And what? You know, I, don't, I don't like it. I'm not. Like I'm it. not. No, 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 no. I'm not like <laughs> trying to attack the ladies. Come on now. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello, ladies. Hey, yeah. Hey, ask me, do I give a fuck about the shit I said last week? Yeah, I know you don't. Do, I know you too. Do shit. you? Oh, you don't? I Damn. Don't did, we lose, I'm did we lose listeners last week? I don't know. We have don't like... Give a, no, because <laughs> the numbers were, je- were high as hell. <laughs> yep. Shit. I love it. Speaking of the ladies, next yeah. thing we're going to talk about is Alexa Bliss versus Charlotte. That is right. The Raw Women's Champ versus the SmackDown Women's Champ. <gasps> yeah. Wow. Picture that. Man, I'm just so like I'm so pissed that it's not Alexa Bliss and Natty to be honest with you. I'm so just Shut up, disappointed. Caleb. Shut up, Caleb. Um, I, I do you guys care if I start this one? I know I've started like all of them. You're, you're, you're a Charlotte I, Mark. This is all. This is your ahead. time, brother. I am a Charlotte Mark, but let me just go ahead and tell you, <clears throat> the only reason I don't hate this match is because they didn't really ever make us feel like we were really gonna get Alexa and Natalia. They never put any, like, they never really put any, like, and I know it's hard to do stories when you're on separate brands, but they never even really put anything together with them. Like, like, you know how they did with, with, and we'll talk about it later, but you know how they did with Brock and Jinder. They kind of tried to kind of have some kind of story. They never even did that with Alexa and Natalia. So the only reason I'm not shitting on this match entirely is because of that fact that it was like, because I don't like the fact that they just shoehorn the title on Charlotte so they could get the best possible match or the most intriguing possible match that they that that you know what I mean. So I'm just gonna say that first of all. So I'm looking at this from just a match standpoint because there is no fucking story once again unless it's Alexa Bliss punching Charlotte in the face. On Sma- a story. In a SmackDown. There's well, a story. I'll tell you about it. There's a story. Right. I know what you're gonna what you're gonna go with. They both are the only two women to win both titles. No, no, that's not and, what I'm and, uh, and Alexa is the only one that Charlotte or Charlotte's the only one Alexa hasn't put down on the four horse. That's what I was going to say. Yes, yes. Like I get all that, but like between the two of them, they're really like in terms of those two, there's not much there. Like there's no like real, like we didn't, they didn't, they ain't, they ain't got on the mic and gotten after each other or anything like that. That's what I mean. I know. And I get what you're going to say and you're feel free to, expand on that point when we get there but this is to me this is a simple case of give me the the best possible match we can pull out for survivor series it's alexa bliss and it's charlotte and this is gonna this is a this is a trend you will see as we get further along in this pay-per-view i think and i'm really saving my my ether for the end of this and i'm trying to hold back right now so I, at the moment i'm just going to say that the match will be good, I think. It's going to be kind of awkward because Alexa's so little and Charlotte's a fucking giant. I feel like it could be one of those Sasha Charlotte matches where Charlotte just beats the Jesus out of Sasha or Alexa. I mean, um, so I don't, I don't. And I really like. I'm, I'm. I have an idea of who I think will win the match, but I just I'm trying to take this match at face value and just say, okay, all right. So go ahead, Caleb. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> um, I want to say real quick, cause again, they didn't have a lot of build for, you know, the Alexa and Natty match and like 
none for Alexa and Charlotte, obviously, other than, you know, the little beatdown they had. Um, that being said... I love how they have uh, done the um, how SmackDown or Vance or whoever has done the Charlotte character in recent months, because my God, when she came over, I was like the least interested in her because they were trying this face run with her. And I wasn't not really a big fan those first couple of months. And then when she came back after, you know, her dad's health scare, uh, things really started to turn around for me as a viewer. And um, I've really like kind of invested in the character you know i'm actually a little bit interested in charlotte for the first time since probably her nxt days to be honest with you and um my god i mean i know you know she uh, she actually knew rick was in the building or whatever on tuesday but i popped like hell whenever she ran to her dad and hugged him after she won the belt sure great stuff um again i'm sure the match will be fine charlotte will uh because Alexa's serviceable, Charlotte is pretty freaking good. So I would hope that they'd be able to uh, work something out that's uh, palatable for me as a fan. Um, that's really about all I have. Uh, Rance, what do you have to say, sir? If you thought genuinely that they were going to put Natty in the spot, you you guys are fools. No, I, I did not think There's, that. Just so you know. So that's no, why once I they never... announced Charlotte was in the title match against Natty. Writing was on the wall. I think we all kind of. I it could they could look. I would have rather had Tamina. Anybody, Lana, Lana. There's no way in hell they were gonna give Natty the spot. There's no way in hell. Um, and it's because she's garbage. But that's another conversation. Um, I'm very happy to have this match because this is the. There's not very many interesting clashes that we can have of the current women's roster, right? Right. Um, I think the biggest we can have that we haven't seen yet will ultimately be involving Oscar. Like Paige and Oscar will be interesting as fuck. Uh, Charlotte and Oscar will probably be the biggest because but name value. But Oscar, notwithstanding, because she just got there, of the women that had been there the entire time, there's no really interesting clashes left but right. Charlotte and Alexa. So sure. for that reason, among the fact that. Alexa has chopped down every single four horsewomen. And when I say chopped down, I mean, look at what happens to them after they feud with her. They get dropped down on the card. It's not just she beats them. They get dropped down in the the pecking order. Um, So to see Charlotte step up and do that, knowing that Charlotte has so much on her shoulders behind her, and, uh, and Alexa always Naya's never far you know it's interesting to me i i'm i'm curious to see what what will happen plus um you know how y'all how y'all gonna say y'all i mean iwc feels about a prospective aj brock match or something like that this is this is that for me this is that for me because alexa's tiny as fuck and charlotte like you said is a giant compared to her right like this is that for me the difference is Charlotte isn't gonna kill her when he when she hits her, right? <laughs> um. So yeah, I'm 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 here for it. I'm definitely gonna be interested to see what happens, and I'm a million times more interested than it, it, that I am if it would have been Natty. Because had Natty been in this match, I would have abstained <laughs> from from saying anything. I would have I would have done a silent <laughs> protest while oh, you okay. talk about it. The, so you uh, would have sandbag. So what you would have done is you would have sandbagged the pod, and I just want you to know. That is detri- That is conduct detrimental to the SMC podcast. Well, I was going to say that Carl he, and I he, <laughs> will send your ass home. I was going to say that if he's uh, doing a silent protest, then odds are he might be the next GQ Citizen of the Year. Well, no, I can't oh, be GQ boy. Citizen of the Year according to people of Caleb's ilk because <laughs> because <laughs> fuck because I didn't raise thirty seven uh, extra viewers on the pod. <laughs> all right so let's let's move on i think we all got our Joke shit in on this yeah Prediction. yeah um charlotte wins uh charlotte wins also unrelated and depending on card placement carmella cashes in Ooh. okay i'm gonna say carmella does not cash in but i will say charlotte wins the match uh i think that um 
we talked about how Alexa has chopped down all the four horsewomen, right? Well, this is the biggest tree in the forest, so to speak. Oh, I like and not that. Only, and not only that, yeah. not only that, if we still are led to believe that the four horsewomen are going to have their own match with the other four horsewomen at some point, if we really think that's something that could be a possibility, all four of them losing to Alexa Bliss does not bode well for like credibility. So I'm going to go ahead and say that they got to have one that still needs to that needs to beat Alexa. I think it'll be Charlotte. Uh, she's the player, baby. Uh, so give me Charlotte. I disagree. First and foremost, Uh-oh. first and foremost, I think the fact that all four losing to Alexa helps their their cause to fight the four horsewomen because on all think about it, Marina Shafir and Jessamyn Duke are trash MMA fighters already. <laughs> and then they've never wrestled they never wrestled before, right? Ronda is a great judoka, but she cannot stand with anybody and she's never wrestled before. The only one of them that's legit is Shayna Baszler and she lost cuz she hurt her little bitty let me that's fucked up. I'm just joking. She hurt her rib. Yeah. Right? I was about to be fucked <laughs> up, but I like I like Shayna Baszler, right? So, at least now the playing field will be evened. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because Sh- They're Char- all losers. Charlotte and Sasha are already <laughs> top ten all time women's wrestlers. Becky is amazing, and Bailey is Bailey. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, no, no. You say that. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna counter with this. And I am, I am tired of the percentage of fans that decided, oh, Bailey sucks now. I never like Bailey. God damn it, Ask that Carl. is not I never like Bailey. Oh. Okay. Well. If you're saying that, that's, wrong. You never Emo- liked her, that's fine. Emotionally, I was always, you can't not watch her and not be emotionally invested. I, I love Bailey. Of, that's full disclosure. She, I, I love never, Bailey. I never cared about Bailey. I, I never was a Bailey fan. No. So but either way. But no, to your credit, <laughs> Caleb, a lot of people turned on her. And maybe that, you know what, maybe another podcast will get a chance to really delve into that. But, because really, that's an interesting situation. But Alexa wins. And okay, so... Alexa wins, and Carmella cashes in. Okay. Okay. All right. The next docket. Let's 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 get this one away because I am really not interested in this one. <laughs> we have got the Raw women versus the SmackDown women. The Raw women consisting of Alicia Fox, Alicia Sasha Fox. Banks, Bailey, Alicia Fox, and uh. Bailey. Sasha Banks, Nia Jackson, who's the fifth woman? Oscar. Nobody's, Oscar. Ready, nobody's ready for it. How'd I forget about Oscar? Shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. And then the SmackDown women, which uh, we have got four of five confirmed so far. Um, let's see here. Four of five women confirmed. We have got the Captain Becky Lynch. We have got. Tamina. Naomi, Carmella, Tamina. Yeah. And a, a mystery woman because they didn't say Natalia. So I, I don't know if it will be Natalia at this Please point. I certainly hope fired. not because. Please let her get fired. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> she... I'm joking, Carl. Hey, I'm joking, dude, Carl. Rance, I'm joking. Rance. Damn it. That woman has a cat family. She's got cats <laughs> to feed. <laughs> and, Hey, this fancy feast ain't gonna pay for itself, all right? Hey, exactly. yeah, get Tupac, together, man. Tupac's got endorsements, bro. They don't need, they don't need Natalia stuff. <laughs> Tupac. All right. So all right. fifth, let's who jump in. Could it be? Could it be Paige, who uh, apparently spoiled her own return on Monday? <laughs> or could it be like a Nikki Bella, a Brie Bella? Could it be one of them three? Fuck. Uh, could it be? Wait, 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 wait. Why? Well, why that? Oh. But why fuck? Why what? Yes. What, what did wondering? the Bellas do to you, man? Why do people hate them? The Bellas didn't do anything to me personally. Me and the Bellas are cool. All right? If the if I saw the Bellas hanging out downtown Fort Smith, Arkansas, I'd be like, what's up, Nikki? What's up, Reed? Of course you would. I just, I just don't want to see them, either one of them, in this match. I'm done. I'm done with the Bellas. If I got to hear that awful fucking theme song ever again in my life, I'm done. I'd rather hear Stephanie McMahon's music hit and be the fifth woman than the Bellas. Would you rather, would you rather, I know he uh, was apparently released this week, 
But would you rather see a uh, one Janice Ellsworth? <laughs> Janice Ellsworth. Wow. Uh, yes, absolutely. But hold on. Yeah. Hold on. So why don't we look at Nikki like we look at these other people? Because Nikki, y'all, the biggest complaint y'all had about the Bellas back in the day was that they were models who didn't care about the business. They weren't very good, and they slept with two top guys to get their spots right. Well, Nikki broke her neck, and she's still out here trying to come back. Sure. Right? Why can't we give her no credit? I love Nikki. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, absolutely. I I will give her credit for that, for, for, you know, returning after a broken freaking neck. I can appreciate that. (laughs) That would be an that being said, like gimmick, by the way. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> if she just took Kurt's gimmick and was like, I want a diva or a women's championship with a broken face. They have back. Carl, it would fit because they have about the same amount of acting ability, so it, it's That's fitting. True. It's both both bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right about that. Oh man. I think my biggest beef is like watch an episode of Total Divas sometime, Rants. Like I watch it all. I love Total Divas. Oh, I never miss it. Oh yeah, so so you see Nikki Bella's portrayal on Total Divas, and you're like, awesome. Is that it? No, that doesn't that, that don't that doesn't mean shit to me with her in the ring. I mean, all yeah, right. no, it has nothing to do with her in ring. But we're right. going on and on about someone who's probably not even going to be in the match. Well, here's the deal. Okay, here's the deal. Um, I think Paige would be really cool. I'm yeah. really excited. I'm really excited to see Paige come back. Uh. She dropped Del Rio. Who knows if that'll, con- you know, who knows with that, right? But for the moment, she dropped Del Rio. She's young. She's talented. She's got a bright future. And like, I really am looking forward to seeing her back in the ring. I always like Paige. So if it's Paige, awesome. It, it's and I'm not going to be, be, I don't think it will be either. But if, if it's Natalia, honestly, I'm fine with that. Rance, I know you don't like Natalia, but all, all, all shitting on Natalia aside, it's the same argument I had with like, with anybody, like, in gender situation, like, he lost the belt, right? We thought he was going into probably the biggest match of his career with Brock Lesnar. And regardless of how you feel about him, he no longer has that, right? That's kind of taken away. Yeah. Like, I and I, I don't think that's, like, you know, in his situation, you know, say what you will about him, but I feel bad for him, you know? And I, sure. I in the same respect, I would feel bad for Natalia because she's no. not getting it. And that's fine, Rance, but uh, come on. No. Just, just. All right, I'm just, no. you know what? Just mute your microphone, all right? We need to this <laughs> like, I do want to say this, though. I want to tell you why it's not going to be Paige. Because they can't have the opposite of Paige and Xavier Woods being on the same show. They can't have it. Oh, oh maybe shit. You might be right. But I'll just, I just want to, you know, with, with Natty, um, I feel like it will be her. I, I don't want, I don't think they're going to take her completely off the card. Uh, but it is weird that they didn't just already add her. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That does kind of, that's kind of strange. So, yeah, it's kind of like if you're gonna have her, why would you like tease like yeah. the possibility of anyone else? And yeah. it leaves the door open for Lana, who I could not really. That's who's gonna be. Eh. That's who's gonna be. It's gonna be Lana. Think about it. Garbage music. <laughs> pretty good. You do that pretty good. Uh, Lana got jumped with the rest of the girls and got pulled out, right? Yeah, and it, it may be Lana. It may be Lana, and that's fine. Uh, I, I'm I'm rooting for Paige. I think it's going to be Natty, and with possibility of Lana, and that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, the match itself, just real quick synopsis on this. Um, I think Oscar is going to shine here. I don't think it's going to be a Braun Strowman type deal from last year, where like everyone's like, "How are they going to stop Braun Strowman?" Uh, I think they're going to say the same thing about Oscar, and it's probably going to prove to be true. They're going to have no answer. But that's yep. kind of that's kind of where I'm at with this. Uh, so you guys go ahead and if you have more to add, go ahead. Shout out uh, to say, shout out to Alicia Fox, by the way. Alicia who? Alicia Fox. And, Alicia. And I'm let Fox. I'm gonna let you finish it, Caleb. But I want to say this. I really appreciate the fact that Alicia Fox is the captain. Yes. For numerous I- reasons. Number one. Alicia Fox has been there over 10 years, and they ain't never gave her dog shit. She's got her first shirt three months ago, right? Yeah. And number two... Terrible shirt, by the way. It's a... It's a gar- but at least she gets royalties now. Yeah, number, finally. Number two, she is batshit insane. She plays the batshit insane chick so, so convincingly, I think she's crazy in real life. So, <laughs> but... 
doesn't that doesn't that bode for some interesting interactions interactions with the crazy like she was feuded with she was like feuded with bailey and sasha the next week she's hugging them because yeah she's crazy It, it bodes well for not only her interactions with the smackdown women but with her own women. Yes. We don't know what we're gonna get out of Alicia. She's really insane. Yeah, it's it's really great. Yeah, it's a so, cool it's a cool uh you know. I, I just wanna throw that out there. But yeah, sure. That's all that's all, that's all I got. Yeah. Go ahead, I go feel ahead, like I feel like we're on pace to talk about this match for longer than it's actually gonna happen. But <laughs> <laughs> be. that's my partially my fault, but go ahead. Go ahead. It's cool, man. Um I can we can I just make my official prediction? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Official prediction, Team Raw wins, and the survivors are Asuka and Nia Jax. Ooh. Um, I, God, Caleb, you and me are, we are just on the same. Randy! Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Team Raw. However, I'm going to say Asuka is the only, the sole survivor. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Ask, uh... Team Raw wins. Oscar and Nia are the sole survivors. Oscar eliminates four of the five. Hell yeah. Okay. Okay. Sweet. All right. All righty. Next match we are going to talk about, if you do not mind, we have got the Usos against the Ba Raw Tag Champs versus SmackDown Tag Champs. This match is going to be L.I.T. Mama Mia. Oh my Fuck god! Fuck that guy! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Wow! Don't don't Wait, calm actually, down, pal. You know what? Hold on. You know what? First of all, Rance, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Second of all, Caleb, I really like the way you did the Marlo Ronaldo impression. I want to hear what it, I want to hear what it would be like if like someone else was doing comedy. I want to hear some of your other commentary impressions. Well, like, say, say for instance, uh, rest in peace. To the great Eddie Guerrero, who uh, the anniversary well, of his death, 12 years, was recently. Yeah. If he God. was following this match and talking about this match, well, what would great, great Eddie Guerrero have to say? Well, everyone who, who's listening, not for the first time, knows exactly where we're going. So, so real quick, I want to say um, the 13th on Monday, uh, I knew it was the 12th anniversary of the death of Eddie Guerrero. Um, yeah, it's you know it gets me every year. Um, and every year on the 13th, I always, there's one match I always watch. You would think me being a Benoit guy at a long time would have been him and Eddie, but no, it is of course, Eddie versus Brock Lesnar. And my God, um, just real quick, fucking the atmosphere of the cow palace that night. Awesome. His biggest moment ever. His biggest moment ever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They, every false finish Brock had, there was always that. Oh, yeah. every false finish that he had, it was like, oh, my God. Yep. So, yeah, um, awesome match. Control. When he gets that three count, oh, my God, it just loses the, – the crowd loses their shit. I always pop when I see him, like, roll over the back of Brian Hebner. And kind of pull uh, him up a little bit, yeah. <laughs> just a little, yeah. He goes into the crowd for a second, and then security's quickly like, get the fuck out of there. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway – uh, I got off on a little bit of a tangent there. Um, if Eddie Guerrero were calling some sort of action, I mean, I'm sure, you know, if, you know, because Morrow might ca- call the Mama Mia after like a dive or something. So after a dive, Eddie might, might uh, if he were a commentator, he might uh, let out a Viva la casa! Do, do, do. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, it's good tribute. R.I.P. Eddie Guerrero, one of the, the greatest, if not the greatest in-ring performer of all time. Anyways, so let's move on. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Oh, I yeah. Get... It was in the bar. I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I lost my train of thought there. The the two best tag teams in the world. Hi, Young Bucks. Uh, um, No, I was going to say, yeah, the Young Bucks are still out there. G.O.D. is still out there. Oh, okay. boy. Is still out I'm a there. G.O.D. fan. I'm a G.O.D. fan. But, but... out here taking his shots. Oh, the Usos are better than the Young Bucks. Absolutely. I wouldn't argue that. I actually Absolutely. think. I actually think the Bar and the Usos are also the two best. I teams do too. That's now. why I said they're the two best tag teams in the world. There, there, there is one team that's been inactive for a little bit, but uh, yeah, just saying. <laughs> well, hey, if you can't, if you can't be reliable. Oh, oh, you, oh, oh, 
Oh, yeah. you're gonna get a you're gonna get a knuckle sandwich, Carl. You keep that <laughs> shit up. Oh, cause cause it's no flips, just fists. Is that why? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right, so let, let's talk about this for a second because this is actually the match that I'm the most looking forward to on this entire card. And the funny thing is, it, once again, once again, we'll go this theme. This is brand warfare, so there's just not a ton of story here, right? It's just kind of we caught we all for a minute we all thought it would probably it might be it was so uh, the, the shield and two thirds of the shield versus you know the Usos, which and that is, is the added. only match that could have surpassed this. Can you imagine what that would have been like? Yeah, yeah, sure, it would have been a blast. I, so I, I I look at this match and I just like guys, these are four of the best. Period. The Usos as a unit are outstanding. So this is, in my opinion, and probably some of yours as well, from the beginning of the Sheamus and Cesaro singles feud to now, this is Sheamus' best run in WWE, in my opinion. Absolutely. In terms of, yes. in terms of quality oh, and everything like that. Same with Cesaro. Uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. This These two were made for each other as a tag team in the wrestling ring. They are awesome. And I'm a little, like, I'm a little... I get a little pissy, like on on Raw, and thank God for the Miz once again. Shout out to the Miz when Sheamus and Zaro are trying to cut their promos on Miz TV, and the crowd is doing their usual dumb shit that they do. And I don't like like they're what chanting Cesaro because he can't speak because he's Swiss gay Nakamura with his fucking mouthpiece. <laughs> Swiss and they're, gay. And, they're, and they're and they're and they're telling they're telling <laughs> Sheamus that he looks stupid. Because the promo, I mean, they're not great pro. They never really have been outstanding promo guys. Oh, and thank God for the Miz for for jumping in there and being like, "Hey, shut the fuck up, right?" But it, it, I mean, I'm not shitting on the crowd, but I get it. But um, this match, man, this it really feel like this is going to be the show stealer of the night. Uh, these nope. guys, the, nope. the well, fuck you. Uh, so the 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 Usos. Have got that like this new this new um, what do you want to call do it? Do not say gangster. No, no, I was gonna say that. Just they're, they've got the, a new attitude, right? They've okay. been so much better with this new attitude. And Cesaro and Sheamus, they really do think they are the best tag team. Uh, they're always out there talking about how they set the bar and all that stuff, right? So I feel like it's gonna be hard hitting on one side. And speed and quickness on the other. Although Cesaro is a freak athlete and he can do everything, but and this was hit hard too. Yeah, so th- this whole thing just feels like, in terms of match quality, this is the match. So I'm really looking forward to this, even though there's no story. Once again, I poo-poo WWE a little bit for that. And we'll get into it some more, but this is the match I'm most looking forward to for the night. So go ahead, guys. Yeah, real fucking workhorses out there. Um, yes. Again, not a lot of story to go into, but uh, the match is going to be awesome. I will be shocked if it does not. We we're talking about the bar. They don't just set the bar. They are the bar. Yes. You know? and pretty we good. Were talking about pretty the good. Usos. Me? And mm-hmm. I know this might ruffle some feathers, rustle some jimmies. Um, some of you might get triggered. I don't know. The <laughs> Usos were one half of the 2017 feud of the year. Okay. Barring a, barring a miracle. Yeah, yeah, with the New Day. Barring a miracle from something else, they are, in my opinion, the 2017 feud of the year with the New Day. And, you know, not just on story, basically on matches. Yeah. But, yeah, um, that's slightly unrelated. <laughs> but, yeah, very excited for the match. I don't have a lot to say, though, because there's not a lot of story to go into. Yeah, there exactly. Rants, you yeah. got to, like, pull like cool shit out of your ass with this Mm-mm, stuff. No, you don't. A little bit, yeah. No, there's Rants, one go ahead. Thing, there's one thing you guys are not paying attention to. Yeah. Uh, and Jimmy Uso said it in his promo uh, Tuesday. Oh, yep. Last year, the last two teams in the five-on-five between tag teams were the Usos and the Bar. And this year, they're the tag champs going into it. So they're basically the, the story basically is, for a full year, we've been the best two tag teams in the company. Now we get a chance to actually go at it. That's, right. that's the little story behind that. And they are. The Usos are um, the Usos always were amazing. It, it they it's like Denzel. They had to get crooked for y'all to appreciate them. The Usos have all yeah, they've always been great. It's just the the old character got stale after a while with the face paint and all that shit. It just got up boring. 
they've always been great in the ring. They're, anybody that says otherwise is crazy, in so, my opinion. At least. So, so this match is going to be amazing. It's not going to be a show still. Your show still we have yet to talk about. Oh God! But Sami Zayn's not on the card. Absolutely, because because <laughs> then that would be up there with the Enzo Kalisto shit, right? Yeah, oh, come on, but, come on, yeah, not the sandwiches all around now, dude. Oh man, You're losing my simpy rants. Yeah, predictions. Uh, Go ahead. Okay, uh, okay, prediction time. Um, let's say the bar again. Um. I'm going to go with, because I feel like there could be a little bit of change here towards the end, I'm going to go with the Usos. I, I think they're going to pull this one out. Usos won last year. Usos win this year. In the city, they learn how to wrestle. Usos did not win last year. The Usos in the 5-on-5, five five, they won the 5-on-5. Five five. They did. The bar won the 5-on-5. Five five. What are you talking about? Did they? I swear, dude. The bar won the 5-on-5 five five last year. We don't believe you. We need more people. <laughs> That's a Jay-Z. I, I don't fucking remember, so I can tell you that much. Uh, well, anyway, regardless, Usos win. In the okay. city, they got trained. Shout out to Uncle Umaga. Rest in peace. Caleb, I hope you're keeping track of these predictions, because I'm damn sure not. I've been drinking. Oh, me neither. Well, we me don't neither. Have to I'll have to. If you want to pay, keep track of these predictions, all you have to do is listen to Download the pod. Download the podcast Look on Podbean. Yes. <laughs> Pop. Uh, all right. So, so we're almost done, guys. I promise. We're all Carl, three more, three yeah. more matches to go. Yeah, Carl. Who'd you say again? Because I can't remember. Usos. Okay. So we finally disagree on something. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Next match. Um, let's talk about the men's five on five. We have got Team Raw of Samoa Joe, Finn Balor, Braun Strowman. The the Raw General Manager, Kurt Angle, and the WWE Coup, the COO, Triple H, <laughs> against Team SmackDown of your commissioner, Shane McMahon, the glorious Bobby Roode, Shinsuke Nakamura. The artiste. Yes, the artiste. Randy, I swear to God, I'm trying Orton. And, <laughs> and the and the 16 time world champion John Cena. Um, Jesus hell? Christ, what a few like uh, what a few like massive changes and additions they've made to this match just in the span of like six days. You know, they go, let's put John Cena on Team SmackDown, and then they go, let's put Triple H on Team Raw in place of uh, Young Will Smith. But uh, those, of you, th- those of you, Smith, dog. What the, man hey, got me Will Smith? It, it's the meme. I'm, I'm yeah, just the meme, the meme. Yeah, I love oh, the meme. Oh, he don't want me, man. <laughs> uh, by the way, if y'all thought that uh, it's so hard to say goodbye for gender last week was epic, I might do one for Jason Jordan this week. <laughs> okay, that man, right. yeah. Yeah, he got that gold shovel treatment, dude. Uh, you, guys, you guys go ahead on this. I, I'm gotta get my thoughts together because I'm really Carl about to shit on this match. I want y'all to know that Carl is about to take a massive shit on this match. Y'all go okay. ahead, though. Y'all go so ahead. Carl, Carl, Carl might you know do whatever he wants to do. You know, that's up to him. You know, I'm uh, cautiously optimistic. As one, the Doc Chad Matthews has preached over the past week. I am approaching this match in particular with a lot of cautious optimism. Um, and, um, I mean, I'm very, there's a lot of interesting matchups they can have in here within the match. You know, you could have Triple H and his son, Bobby Roode. You could have Triple H and, and Nakamura. You could have, um, John Cena and Braun Strowman again. You could have John Cena and Finn Balor. Oh yeah. Triple H and Shane. I'm so interested. Do not roll your (laughs) eyes. We have never seen it now recently. Yes. (sighs) Yeah. The only the only way I'll be like interested is if they start shooting on each other, <laughs> which they might. They might, yeah. Shane yeah. is an insane individual. He just might potato do yeah. for real. Yeah. Um. I'm Owen Cena. Which um. Have they did? Did they do that match on Raw? Which one? Uh, Samoa Joe and John Cena. They did a tag match. They didn't do a one on one. They did a tag. Oh, okay. Um. But yeah, I'm really interested in the matchup. Um, I will say this one criticism I have, and it's 
a part of the reason why I prefer the four on four to the five on five is especially when you load the matchup like this. Mm-hmm. Now, instead of having like five or six guys, you've got to kind of protect a little. You've got two extra. Um, so you've got to kind of book around that. And uh, I worry that they are going to overbook this thing into oblivion. But um, we'll have to wait and see, man. Um, Rance, I know we're going to we know we're going to let Carl go last on this one because he says he's got some shit to say about it. But uh, Rance, what do you got, man? So um, a lot of fans were disinterested in, in this card before uh, before the changes were made, so to speak. I was always into it and interested because there's always time to change and always time to build a story until the match happens. And we had so much time before, I knew something was going to, something interesting was going to happen, right? So, with gender losing, which means AJ couldn't be in the match, with them needing a, a fifth guy, with Jason Jordan being put in, knowing very clearly everybody knowing he was the weak link, knowing that Kurt Angle right now uh, is having issues with his boss, Stephanie, and Kurt Angle is really, really becoming a weak individual when it comes to his son, right? Giving opportunities he doesn't deserve, uh, mm-hmm. not being the same guy when he's around, crying all the goddamn time. Well, he, well that's, that hadn't changed. But you know what I mean. Um, there's a lot of interest there. The uh, the interest jumped up tenfold with Triple H. The interest jumped up tenfold for me for this reason. Stephanie, that y'all, a lot of fans say that there's no stakes in the match. Maybe there's no stakes in tar- uh, concrete stakes. Call call it Chick Fil A because there is no beef in that match at all. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. There's beef. There's just no stakes, except, and I mean, it's, it's a big thing. For example, between all three of us, I'm the best. Y'all might think y'all the Bullshit, best. Bullshit, dude. Th- there you go. Ah! That's the, that's, that, see that thought process? That's exactly it. I, I want to be the Rant. best. You're the best. Carl knows what's You're up. You're the bestler, better than all the wrestler. <laughs> y'all know what's up. Uh, But no, the, the sister and brother want to be better than each other, right? And... Yeah, everybody knows Raw has been historically the bigger and better show. Hell, the twenty the twenty fifth anniversary of Raw is coming up in three in three two months, and SmackDown's gonna be on the show, right? So, uh, there's always gonna be the interest there, right, between it. So now with Triple H, the COO, doing his wife's bidding, in a in a match where he's gonna have a beef with his own captain, quote unquote, in the general manager, and his brother. On the other, there's just so much involved, and WWE has shown in the past four or five years that they really respect the five on fives again. They've given a lot of respect to the to the main five on fives, uh, like last year, which was an epic match. Uh, I want to say it was 2014 when uh, Dolph basically ran the gauntlet. Like they've shown a lot of respect to these. So with all of these uh combustible elements and you got these new elements in there that are going to be major players like Bobby Roode and Shinsuke or like Joe and Braun who's going to get a chance to actually be a part of the match this year since they don't have a ma- the mascots gone you know I just I, there's so much involved then is Jason Jordan going to come out and do something stupid cuz he's clearly turning heel is Kane going to come out and fuck Braun Strowman you know like what's gonna happen on the other side? Will Cena really be 100% for SmackDown? Will Daniel Bryan come down and cause Shane to get into it because they got beef? Like there's so much, and like Jim Ross always says, you want to leave them with more questions than answers because that's what builds television. So yeah, I'm here for this, man. I'm excited. Yeah, I got I got an answer. Oh shit. Um, fuck this match. And, oh. look, and here's the deal. Okay, here's the deal. First of all, I want to just go down this list of guys in this match that I actually really like. Kurt Angle, Triple H, Braun Strowman, Fuck You Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, 
Shane's whatever. John Cena. I like Orton in small doses. Shinsuke Nakamura. I like all these guys. This match. Fuck this match. First of all, I said it online the other day on Twitter. This is the senior citizens 515, other than Braun Strowman, okay, who's almost there anyway. Exactly. Okay, so just make my point for me. This is the senior citizens match. Okay. The most interested I am about this is all the shit that happened that has nothing to do – like, it has nothing to do with the match itself. Like, I mean, it does, but it doesn't. Like, Triple H kicking out Jason Jordan, right? Jason Jordan's no longer part of the match. I have more interest in Jason Jordan now and where he goes yeah. than I have with this match. Okay? Which is why they did it, by the way. Fans, sure, if you're listening, yeah. it's more interesting for him to get kicked out of the match than for him to be in the match and just be another casualty. Right, right. Yeah. And now I will, I will be the first to tell you, I popped for Triple H when he came out and inserted himself in the match because I love Triple H. He's you one of my he's favorites of all so, time. Yeah, yeah. But let me just also add to a point you made a minute ago about brother versus sister. Brah. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck about brother versus sister. <laughs> and let me, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm serious. And here's the thing. A lot of guys, a lot of people shit on Steph and because she comes out and she talks down to the authority figures or whatever. I don't hate Stephanie. Yeah, man. Everyone. Yeah. I, I don't hate Stephanie. Okay. But I don't, I doesn't, I still don't give a shit about brother versus sister. If that makes sense. Um, this match, like, I don't know. The other thing that interests me, if you're going to add one more thing that interests me about this, is the fact that we're obviously kind of building towards a Triple H and Kurt Angle match at some point, which I'm fine with. Everybody else is already shitting on it. Oh, why is Triple H going to be on the pay-per-view? I can tell you why. Because when fucking Motorhead hits, the crowd loses their mind. So in case you haven't understood that part of it, that's why Triple H wrestles on WrestleMania every fucking year. Just FYI. But let's forget that, okay? Forget that for a second. Once again... Cena hasn't, like, well, I get he's in the match. What has he done? Like, he hasn't been around in forever. Randy Orton has disappeared. You hardly ever see him that much, except for the Sami Zayn stuff, right? He has done, t- he took no yeah, part. Yeah, he'll in- be on SmackDown next week to put Sami Zayn through the table. He but, took, yeah. he took, he took no part in the siege, and he wasn't around when they were under siege, okay? Bobby Roode. Jesus Fuck Christ. Fuck that tagline, by hey, the way. I'm sorry. Hey. I just got to say it. Yeah. Don't make that me get That tagline... Ugh. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to say it. That tagline is terrible. Okay? Don't steal your fucking taglines from Steven Seagal movies. <laughs> ah! All right. All right. So, so Bobby Roode, I could care less about. Nakamura, like... I mean, we all hate we all hate Jinder Mahal, right? Like, well, I don't, but you guys don't like him, right? Let's let's not forget that that he's been Nakamura was cleanly pinned by Jinder Mahal, cleanly I guess you could say. But he was pinned by Jinder Mahal what twice, so I don't care about him either. Shane McMahon's forty seven and throws punches like my five year old. Okay, the only person there are two people in this match other than I guess Triple H, but I mean we know he's Triple H, Braun Strowman because I think he should get some redemption. From last year when he got eliminated, as it were, by James Ellsworth and Samoa Joe. Because Samoa hasn't been back in a while. And Samoa's a badass. Did, right? did you just call him Samoa? He did. Samoa. Twice. He's Samoa. He's Samoa. Twice. That's back guy. to back. Yes. He's back. That's how that's how guys, I've said it on Twitter multiple times now. Samoa Joe is the most Samoan guy on the roster. His parents <laughs> named him Samoa. Um, I'm also like Kurt Angle walks like the letter S. <laughs> like, and I don't want to see him in the ring that much. Like, if he does, I don't want it to be in this kind of situation. I want a one-on-one with, with Angle because... This is the I'm best place for him to be. I'm a, well, here's the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm a, well, I would rather... But here's the thing, though. I'm afraid, like, because it is the best place for him, but if I want to see an actual match... So, I don't want to. I don't want to see him in there just because he's going to do a couple two but, spots. You know what I mean? Like he's had a match. But, yeah. I would rather see him in there with someone where he can have a lengthy match with and it still mm-hmm. be safe. If that what makes. What you're sense. saying is, if you're going to get hurt in the ring, I'd rather you do it in a match that I care about. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Is that so. it? Yeah, yeah, but, that's fine. But like, I don't. <laughs> I really don't want to see Angle that much to begin with as wrestling. Same. Um. So this match. 
I just, I, I cannot, I cannot, and it's very rare for me to say I don't want to see a match with Triple H in it, okay? I'm just telling you right now, this match will be fine, I'm sure, but I don't give a shit. I don't care. I care more about, this is the match that I care about, maybe the least, on this entire card. Seriously, maybe next to Enzo and Kalisto, okay? Uh, maybe I'll give that one the the nod. But I just this one is I just don't care. I don't and I and I don't like if SmackDown wins, I'm going to throw myself out the window. Seriously. <laughs> like look how look how like stacked Raw is in my opinion compared no, it's, it's pretty to... even. It's pretty even. <laughs> okay. It's pretty even. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Cena, Cena and Triple H, they, they cancel each other out. Is that fair? Sure. Kurt, sure, yeah. Kurt and Shane cancel each other out because this isn't Kurt in his heyday. This is old, broken down Kurt and Shane who's been wrestling multiple four-star matches. So they, they, they say they cancel each other out, right? Mm-hmm. Let's just say I'll let you have that one. Okay. So we got Rude, Nakamura, and Orton against Joe... Balor and Strowman, right? Yeah. Okay. So, can we say that Balor and Nakamura cancel each other out? Oh, why? Because they both wrestled in Japan. And they kick a lot. <laughs> okay. Hey, there's a difference between knee strikes and kicks, sir. But, but sure, okay. yeah. So, and and by the way, everything I'm saying is probably how the match is going to come down to over for honest. Joe and Strowman. And Orton, Mr. Survivor Series, and um, who was and Bobby Roode? Okay, <laughs> I, I almost I, forgot yeah, about I him. I really did. So how could you forget about Bobby Roode? I don't know he's, how. He's glorious. How could you forget about him? <laughs> I'm gonna come to your houses and fight you guys after this. <laughs> hey, that's fine. You come here. You're getting that knuckle sandwich I told you about, man. It's gonna enough. happen. So yeah, I realize we're a bit tired of Orton, and he's earned that. But he's still Randy fucking Gordon. So, Randy, he deserves a modicum of respect. <clears throat> so, while I will give you that Bobby Roode is the weaker, the weakest of the four that, that we're still talking about by far, and Braun might be the hottest of the four, it's still Randy Orton, and this is still Survivor Series. Randy Orton has been in the in the in the uh, finish of every Survivor Series five on five match he's ever been in. Right? Yeah. He yes. is the no exaggeration with when I said the statement. He's the greatest wrestler in Survivor Series five on five match history. This yeah, is, I this mean, is what he does. Those, yeah. So, I think that would even up out with how great Braun has been. So really, you're just talking about Joe and Bobby. It's a lot more even than you guys think it is. Well, maybe, but still, my for prediction this matches, says, your I got you. I got you. My my prediction says Team Raw still wins. Oh, Raw gonna win. Yeah, Raw gonna yeah. win. Yeah, the uh, yeah, Raw's definitely gonna win. Um, I don't want to cut any of you guys short. Do you guys have? Much else to say about the match, or do you want to nope. predict now? We're, we're done. I just, all I would ask, thank you. All I would ask you guys is, who do you think is going to be the, the survivors? Okay, uh, Team Raw's going to win when uh, Triple H is your sole survivor. Okay. Uh, Team Raw is going to win when Finn Balor is your sole survivor. God, that's going to. Be oh, cool. and also, um, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens take out Shane, and possibly John Cena, because I don't think he's booked for the rest of the year. But yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Raw wins, and Samoan Joe is your <laughs> final. And actually, it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Samoan Joe and Braun, but definitely Samoa Joe. I say Finn only because I feel like he's Brock's next opponent for the Universal title. Brock's going to kill him. So, well, that's Brock's fine, but I, just, I say Brock's we got to make him we, like his third lunch of the day. we got to make Finn look strong, pal. So. Finn must pose. Two more Maybe matches, that, gentlemen. Yes, two more. Okay. And this uh, match, this next match is the real show stealer. No, let's, because uh, I want to end on a positive note, because 
you guys might have a lot to say about the champ versus champ match and it, some of it might be negative. So let's just let's get into that cuz I feel like you guys have a lot of positive to say about the 3 on 3 that's Caleb left. Knows my heart. So let's Caleb ta- knows let's my heart. cuz here's the thing guys. I'm you know contrary to what my times make it seem. I'm a very positive guy. I like to put positive energy out there. You know what I'm saying? So first and foremost, let's give you guys what might be some names. AJ Styles, the WWE champion, versus Brock Lesnar, the Universal champion. Um, this match has received two promos of build. Woo! Um, <laughs> two, two fine promos of build. That, that, um, well, that, less that, build than that, what that was... That that's one of them that didn't match. involve the WWE champion. Let's keep that in mind, because he didn't say a fucking thing, really. And neither yeah, did the... I, and he, think, and neither... Come to think of it, neither did the Universal Champion. <laughs> Carry on. Brock doesn't in any of his promos, dude. Unless he's telling you about your kids. He's not talking. <laughs> but <laughs> we've That's got fair. Brock Lesnar and AJ Styles one-on-one. My God, I hope Brock Lesnar is coming to work. Uh, there are seemingly no UFC fights on the horizon for him. So... Um, I'm very hopeful for this match. Again, this is another one. Cautionism. Um, if Brock Lesnar comes ready to work, this match is going to be insane, crazy, loco, whatever other adjective you might have to add. But yeah, this match, if Brock Lesnar's ready to work, will be awesome. If Brock Lesnar decides to continue in previous events, it will be a Brock Lesnar match, and it will exist. May, may I? May I? Yes. Yeah. So, if you were to lay every match you could think of out, lay it on a lay it on a table, and I had my choice of matches to fuck, it would be this one. <laughs> fuck this match. Fuck. Oh, oh, oh you match. mean in a bad way. Okay, gotcha. Fuck this match. I will watch Enzo Kalisto five times before I have any interest in this match. I have none. <laughs> Zero. None. And that's and that's no disrespect to the performers involved because they're amazing performers. I have no interest in seeing Brock Lesnar fight anybody who is not almost his size. I don't. Because no, th- this isn't a guy, this isn't a small guy fighting Kane. Or small guy fighting Taker. Or even small guy fighting Braun. Those guys sell for people. Brock is uh, the most unsellable. He's, he is... And this is this is how he's been since he came back. And it could be all Braun. It could be all Vince. It could be a, ma- a mixture of both. But there is nothing interesting to me about a guy who unrealistically won't beat the guy. And can't, can't, st- can't stick with the guy three minutes real in a realistic point of view. And then a guy who squashed John Cena, who beat Samoa Joe in eight minutes, who beat Braun Strowman clean in 10 minutes, and AJ Styles, no matter how great he is, all five foot 11 of him is supposed to go and beat the fucking beat. No, I'm, nothing about this interests me I, at all. Can I can I uh, counterpoint you real quick? You and your counterpoints could be. Sure, but they could be real and valid. But it don't mean shit to me. But I, I really do want to hear it. Yes. It, well, you know, again, I talked about it before. Wrestling is a predetermined sport. Mm-hmm. So you can write whatever story you want, even mm-hmm. at the the um, behest of some other fa- of some fans. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about it earlier. Um, Brock Lesnar. And again, this was pre pre-NFL Brock Lesnar, pre Everything Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Brock Lesnar took an L to one Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. Okay. But but how did and he lose that? The match? only story. Oh, how did he lose that match? Well, yeah, there was, there was interference. Yeah, there, but and here's it, from a point of realism, if if you route, all you have to do, quote unquote. Okay, I gotta stop you. I was trying really, really, really hard to deal with it, but it's getting too bad now. I need you to start uh, off. Uh, oh. 
Okay, I thought... Um... No, no, yeah, yeah. All you, right. You, have like, you would say two words and the word would cut out, then two words and the word would cut out. And I was trying That's my no best good. to see if it could make it, but it was... It just went too bad, yeah. So, if you would, okay. start over. So, okay. Our rants, uh, of realism, um, again... Predetermined for you can write whatever outcome you want. Or what you might have to say about Brock Lesnar, and this was pre-NFL, pre-UFC. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I lost you again, brother. No, okay. we got two more. We got two more. Two more. So we almost done. Don't even feel bad. Keep on, keep on moving. Uh, it. Are you are you are you still there? Still there? Can you? Nothing. Damn! It went like from good to awful in a matter of seconds. Because he because because God knows this bullshit Caleb about to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> can you hear me? Can you see me? Yeah. Good. Can't see me. My time is now. All right, so I'm gonna get going then. Okay. Um, so rants from a point of realism again, predetermined sport. Right, whatever outcome you want, because you know you you have that artistic license or whatever. That being said, pre UFC, pre NFL, Brock Lesnar lost the title, and yes, granted there was interference. Major lost. interference. By yes, the biggest, yeah, yeah, by yeah. the biggest beast we've ever seen in wrestling. But okay, that being said, it was a good three minutes after that interference when Eddie Guerrero, of all people, beat Brock Lesnar. Okay, directly and really because all... of that interference, Caleb. Okay, okay, but here is the thing: the only story you have to tell because we haven't seen Brock Lesnar in a in a like a fifteen minute or more match in what since. Since he fought Taker at Hell in a Cell? Maybe. That sounds about right. And that being said, all you have to do is tell the story of, well, Brock didn't have the conditioning that AJ had because AJ does this 300 days a year. But that's not fair because Brock's always shown that he's a freak of nature. Brock jumped jumped over Goldberg doing a spear. Freak, Freak of natures get blown up too. It happens, man. Yeah, but but here, okay, so so I I hear you on that point, and what you're missing is that point could it could happen. What you're missing is it ain't gonna take him that long to beat AJ. He gets his hands on him, it's over. AJ can't run around for 15 minutes. Eventually, he's gonna have to hit the dude. You gonna have to get close. It's no different. It's no different than a heavy uh, than a heavyweight power puncher fighting uh, a, a a a speed a speedier guy, right? Let, let let let's use let's use uh in in boxing for example Ali and Foreman the rope when Ali rubbed up rope it up the right the yeah. reason Foreman lost that fight was because he was too fucking stupid to say I'm not gonna keep punching this dude he's just standing here I'm gonna go and wait for the dude to fight me because he was beating his ass right Brock okay. smarter than that not only is Brock smarter than that he got one of the greatest minds in wrestling history right there on the fucking right sitting down um you know as his advocate so you don't think all you have to do okay if you want to neutralize that all you have to do is a spot where like maybe paul like interferes out of turn or some shit and gets kicked out so That's why it. haven't they done this then you keep saying all they have to do but they have never done it <laughs> maybe maybe they're happened. just waiting man i don't know it's never happened and i will say this I will say this, because there is a story to be told here that you can tell, and you could have done it with gender even, and again, I would have been fine with that on this front, that maybe Brock just, maybe Brock's just not, like, maybe Brock just doesn't bring his best at Survivor Series. He lost last year. That story could have been, he's never won a Survivor Series. Now now you're talking to something that I'm interested in, because that's a story you can actually build. And that's a story you can build and you can do next year again if you wanted. Yeah, but you, you can't can do say it like is, you can't do it, AJ. You can't do it with a smaller I, guy, not with this. Sure, Brock. you could. No, you wanted to, but you can't. 
It no, has I never mean, been you done. could. Yes, the you only, could. The only reason Eddie won that match was because Brock was leaving the next one, next month. Eddie would have never won if Brock wasn't leaving. It's the only reason he won. And I'm a, I'm a Eddie Mark. That's, that's, that's not, that's not, that's not an opinion, Caleb. That's a fact. That's a unmitigated fact. Brock don't lose to these people. He don't. He don't lose to smaller people. He don't even. He don't. He's not even the only person that's ever been competitive against him smaller on just on a single one to one no uh no help no interference basis. It's Punk and Punk is six foot four. Kurt Angle, dude. What are you talking about? Okay, but Angle, but Angle's, but Angle's, Angle's a whole other level. Small. Angle may be small, but that's a whole other level because that they those were grappling matches. Also, You're Angle right. has been legitimized as a badass. Yes. A legitimate badass. Yes. In terms of, I mean, he's won Olympic gold medals with a broken freaking neck. Broken yes. freaking neck, yes. <clears throat> Good, carry on. Oh, and and, okay. and, and and also to add to that, Angle was yes. beating Lesnar when Lesnar was still a rookie. This isn't 2003-2004 Lesnar where he's only wrestled two years in his life. This is 2017 Brock, who's unstoppable unless your name is The Undertaker or Triple H or John Cena. <clears throat> Not even John Cena, really. You right. Well, no, John Cena beat him in the first match back. That's the only reason I said right. that. It's the only right. reason I said that. Goldberg as well. Who? Goldberg. Bill Goldberg. Yeah, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, you're right. Four, four guys, uh, uh, four of the greatest performers ever in history – and AJ's amazing. He's not in that conversation. It's not going to happen. And all you guys can want it to happen as much as you want to. That's fine. I'm cool with what you want. That's great. I want to tell you to never show her face on the TV again. I get what you want. But let's talk about what's really going to happen. Factual information. It's never happened. And it's not going to start now. So I don't give a fuck about that's this why. Match. That's why. That's why you play the game, Rance. That's why you play the game. <laughs> okay. Quoting your uh, your uh, your hero there, Mr. Lewis. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm not too happy with him right now anyway, so. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? Carl. Oh, hey. Yeah. By you the way, yeah, Carl's say, on here. Um, so let's, let's talk about this for a second. This is really where I wanted to go from the start. Oh, oh, real, when we started so, talking about Carl, this. I'm – Carl. I'm real sorry. Um, one that I got to get out there for you, uh, fellow uh, nerds like myself. This right. is the only two men to hold both the IWGP Heavyweight Championship and the WWE Championship are facing each other in this match. Cool. Um, so I want to. This is kind of where I was going earlier when I mentioned the theme of Survivor Series is. Throw out the stories, because there ain't fucking none. Stories, we don't want none. We don't want none. That That is Survivor Series, okay? Oh, God. Carl, Carl and I'm can not we even... call it the pay-per-view? Can we call it the Seinfeld pay-per-view? <laughs> if you want to, if you want to. All right, so here, here's, here's everything I'm going to say about this. This match has the potential to be outstanding, okay? So let's not get it twisted. AJ Styles is the best performer in the world right now. I don't. I mean, in my opinion, if you want to argue, that's fine. Um, Brock Lesnar is a freak of nature. He's been built and presented as such, uh, barring the loss to Goldberg, I guess, really, um, which you could put pin on the fact that Lesnar just was taken off guard, wasn't ready, right? And Goldberg's a so, big freak of nature, yes. And Goldberg is a freaking nature in his own right, sure. So, put that together, and this is potential to be huge. And I just want to say this, okay? As much as this match pisses me off in its own way, I want it to be great, okay? I want everyone to walk away happy on Sunday night and say, that match was outstanding. I do want that for everyone. I want it for Caleb, who is happy because gender isn't involved and rich and all you motherfuckers that didn't want to see gender and Brock. Okay. All of you that have a dissenting opinion for right. me. Damn it. Right. Yeah, exactly. But here's the thing. This, 
guys, and I'm going to go, it's, it's my whole beef with this entire pay-per-view. Like, I get it's brand warfare, but what happened here is they had something in place and it's that whole last minute change thing. And the problem with this is I'm always having to hear how WWE doesn't build new stars. They don't create for the future. They don't do this. They don't do that. They don't do this. They don't do that. We're just Can we talk about Brock Lesnar? How old is Brock Lesnar? 39? Something like that? 39. Okay, sure. Why not? That's fine. I mean, my point will be made. How old is AJ Styles? About to be 40. Ageless. Okay. How like how's the future looking, right? Like you had, and this you can go back to the five on five for Raw. It's the same damn thing. This is the ultimate. I got what I wanted because it isn't gender. So mm-hmm. I'm cool with it now. Mm-hmm. I'm cool with it now. Uh, but, I, but, but, uh, but, hey. I'm not done. I'll let you guys oh. talk. Uh-oh. But but tomorrow, but tomorrow when it's such and such didn't get a push, well, the WWE never fails new stars. And that, 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 that is the problem. I get that okay. you didn't like, I get that you didn't like gender as your star. That's fine. Okay. I can, I can accept that. Okay. I want to. I want to counter this real quick. That's not, fine. Not to Go you, ahead. Not to you specifically, but to both of you. But why is it that when it's AJ going in in place of gender, oh, that's bullshit. This is that. That Why would they do this? But if it's Charlotte over Natty, that's fine. If it's the bar over the shield, that's fine. All right, so where's already, the consistency? I already told you this. I already told you the only reason I let those things slide is because there was also, there was no actual build for the previous match, there was nothing. There was nothing there with Alexa and Natty. Okay, there was nothing that's there. Fair. There was nothing there with the with the Shield and the Usos, really. So yeah, I, I told okay, you that. Okay, okay, that's fair. At the yeah. very okay. least, at the very least, at the very least, and you got to give it this: there was a, a a some sort of there were video packages made. There, there was a work. challenge issued. There, there were promos yeah. cut. Like everything was in place. Okay, and they made that. Yeah, this is a snap decision. Okay, I don't, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, hey, hey, I know exactly where the blame goes on this one. And, and, and this, and trust me, I have no ill will towards AJ. Okay, because I love AJ Styles. So I think he's outstanding. Yeah, I, have, I have no ill same will. Here. I'm not a huge Brock Lesnar guy these days, but I have no ill will towards Brock. I have no, obviously, you know, I feel bad for Jinder Mahal, you know, but not to the point where I'm going to go cry a fucking river for him. But I have. My issues here with WWE because it feels like they took the easy way out. Okay, it feels like they had a plan in place and decided mm, maybe we better not. And a good friend of mine and a friend of the pod who's been on before, Tim, you guys know Tim Rose. I think he made a really good point that if you continue to cater to people, whatever. To, to, to complaints, you're you're gonna be scared to try new shit. You know what I mean? Like gender was an experiment. I'm sorry. Gender was. was champion for six months, dude. Right. I understand. They just that. tried new shit. Okay. But, okay, but that's what I'm saying though. Think about how this bodes for someone like Sami Zayn. Okay. Like think about okay. it. If, if if he goes out there and becomes WWE champ one day, are they gonna be willing to take the risk because he's not AJ Styles? He's not Brock Lesnar. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's not this old fucker that's been around forever. That's, like they there's there's going to be you know hesitance there. And that that to me is the problem. Like you you yeah. if you want new stars, okay? I'm down. If you I'm like I am completely okay with saying, "Okay, I'm going to get 6 months of Sami Zayn as WWE champion," right? But you live with 6 months of Jinder Mahal, right? That trade-off is fine, okay? But what's happened here is we're so mad that he was the champ for however long that now it doesn't even matter who they put the belt on. It doesn't matter. It wouldn't have mattered. Y'all probably y'all would have been. Would you have been happy if they put on Baron Corbin? Probably <laughs> anybody. You know what I mean? Jitter, yeah. And and that in that therein lies my issue with this. There's this whole pay-per-view feels like we were like, you know what? 
let's just put a supercar together. It feels like, and I have no issue with indie shows, but you know how indie shows like to have the best possible car because they yep. have to bring people into the building. Like yeah. WWE doesn't have to do that. Okay. And it feels like they went that route because they're scared. I feel like they are concerned right now when really, I don't think they have to be. And I feel like they're not going to take risks. The right, the risks that they should, you should always take risks. And one you know? take calculated risks. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, one, and one quick point that uh, I want to piggyback on what, what Carl said Fans don't realize how important that gender title win was because that meant to the to the locker room. Because that meant that legitimately anybody can win a championship now. There it it is not it's a the a world championship is truly attainable. It is not just something that, oh well, I, I gotta be this guy or that. It's truly attainable. Because there, if gender well, can win it, it's attainable. And you're going to sit here and say India and all that stuff and cool, great, whatever. No, 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 no. Not what I was going to say. What I was going to say is there is another point of view that can be had about that if you're, uh, I don't know, say uh, Sami Zayn or uh, fucking Dolph Ziggler. I don't know. Um, you can think uh, this fucking guy got a title belt before I did. You can what think that, but but if you're someone. Going on? But Sami Zayn has already proven that. Based on what he did a few weeks ago, yeah. that he's got a little bit of a pissy pants attitude, and yeah. Jinder Mahal well, has well, obviously well. not had that. And, right? and Dolph can't say shit because Dolph has two championship reigns in his in his pocket. He has two world title reigns in his pocket. You know, guys who don't have title reigns: Ted DiBiase, uh, was was my boy, Owen Hart, Roddy Piper, Scott Kurt Hall, Henning. Kurt Henning. So don't sit here and bitch at me because you got you got two title reigns. Let somebody else have one. You had your. I was just using. I was just using Dolph as an example. Oh yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I guess. But those, the, those are the rebuttals to those thought processes. Yeah. But those, are the, those aren't the important people because those guys have been there. What about these guys who are just starting to come up? What about a guy like a Baron Corbin? You know what I'm saying? What about a guy? Uh, um, what about a Kofi Kingston? Sure. You know, they or even a Biggie. There, it, it shows that. Vince is willing to do different things because otherwise it would have been the same guys over and over and over again. Orton, Bray, uh, AJ, Orton, Bray, AJ. It would have been the same things. So now we got different stuff. And then come Mania, when Shinsuke wins the title, it, at least now there's well, diversity. Bray, like, Bray was different. Bray was a stalwart. Bray was like a five-year guy, seven if you count the Husky Harris stuff. Sure, but Bray was, and but Bray was he, a top character. Yeah, and that you put the belt on top characters. That's what you do. I agree, but the point I'm trying to make is, the point I'm trying to make is, you got to make top characters to put to to you got to get some new top characters for the diversity, right? To make change, otherwise it's gonna be the same guys. What? Did, how did you describe Randy Orton? Randy, oh maybe I'll carry the day, Orton, right? Well, Orton. I swear to God, I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah. Rand, <laughs> well, the reason he's like that is because he was given everything when he was young and. They had nobody else to give it to. So now you got a you got new guys. You got a guy who you like him or not had never been in the opportunity and is fresh. And now at least Vince can say you can at least the proof is there to say you you tried something new. Keep trying it. Maybe Sammy will get the title reign. Maybe Corbin will get a title reign. Maybe Bobby Roode will get a title reign. Maybe Big E will get a title. You don't know, but it's 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 different now. Whereas before, I guarantee you. We didn't feel like anything could happen. Well, of course we haven't because we've been crying about – like crying isn't the right word. We've been upset at the fact that certain guys haven't gotten certain pushes over the years. You know what I mean? We're always upset about that. And then when they actually gave someone out of left field the push – Had a problem with it. it we were mad because it wasn't our what we guy. Wanted, what we wanted. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Either way, we're, we're, we're spending a lot of time on a guy who's not even on the show. Right. Well, sure. I get. I mean, I well, get what you're doing, but we're trying to illustrate a point. Okay? Well, yeah, I understand. Well, uh, he's not. No, no, I know what you're going to say. be on okay. the show. Right, right, right. But he's going to be on the show. Okay, I could we'll see. see that. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And I, I hate to, I hate to run us long. So I, I just, yeah, I don't know. Like, I That's hope cool, this match man. is great. I really do want this match to be good, guys. I'm, and I think it's it will trash. be fine. It's gonna be trash. I just. Man, I just don't like. It's gonna be trash. Uh, 
You want me to get invested? I'm not. It's gonna be it's gonna be a bunch of suplex cities, this, that, and the other. AJ's gonna have a glimmer of hope, and the second he gets a glimmer of hope, Jenner's gonna come out, hit him with the Colossus, and then and then uh, Brock's gonna beat his ass with with the F5. It's not gonna be interesting at all. I I will be shocked. I will be I will be genuinely I will be literally and genuinely shocked to my core if they go out there and they actually wrestle a competitive match. Hmm. Well. Yeah, we've we've had quite a mouthful to say about that match. Uh, prediction time, I think. Are you guys cool with that? Yes. Okay. Brock wins, LOL. Uh, Brock Lesnar, yeah. AJ never had a chance. <laughs> All right. So we've got our animosity, our anger, our, our heat, brother, brother. It's out of the way, man. Let's talk about the last edition of this match. Um I'm I'm not going to do that. But uh <laughs> last edition of the match, we have got the Shield versus the New Day. Yeah. This match um I have one prediction real quick not related to the outcome. These three are going to get a this is awesome chant before they even lock up. Oh, absolutely. That's going to happen. Yeah, could um, be. I feel like um I mean, they would have to. They, okay, they will have to work to have a bad match. <laughs> that's that's where they're at. They will have to work their damnedest to make this match bad. Sure. Uh, yeah. Again, call it Chick Fil A because it's got no stake. Um, Shield New Day match is going to be awesome, but there's not a lot there. There's a little bit of a build with multiple interruptions between the two, okay. but Look. not a huge build. Hold okay, on. well, I'm not trying to, okay, okay, that's Hold just, on. okay, I'm not, like, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I fucking hate this match, because there's no No, 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 fucking no, it's ah. not, but this, no, this is starting to really annoy the shit out of me. Oh. We've had, we've had matches that have been on pay-per-views for fucking less, but yep. every match y'all want to sit here and talk about, well, there's no beef, there's no steak, there's no, there's, maybe, the, I don't like you, you don't like me, I don't need to have a 55-day fucking bill, I don't like you, you don't like me. I'm, we're the best trio. No, we're the best trio. Let's fight. It don't, there's a fucking story. Like, like at this point, it's getting, it's really superfluous to continue to say, oh, well, there's not no, yes, it is. There's something there. It's not like they just said, show up. You want to know a match that had no story? AJ Styles versus Finn Balor. He just showed up to the arena. This has a story. The New Day came to their locker room and jumped them. The New Day caused them to lose the titles. There's a story here. Well, I actually was going to say that of all the matches, this one might have the story. Really, on the car, this one might have the best story. Uh, because it's in terms of brand warfare, the New Day led the charge with the initial under siege. I mean, I mean okay, Shane led the charge, but New Day, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean. Right. Yeah, New Day was, and, yeah. And this, and same, real quick, thing, so, sorry guys, uh, I, fine. I've been doing it all night, I'm going to step on your toes once again. This supersedes, this does supersede Raw versus SmackDown, and this lends credence to what you're saying. This isn't Raw versus SmackDown. This isn't about which brand of those two is better. This is about, is the Shield brand better? Is the New Day brand better? Absolutely. Right. But, yeah, so maybe that, you know, completely lends credence to what you're saying, but, yeah. Well, that's, that's where I was kind of going. Like, and of okay. course, you know, the, the shield as well led the charge for the siege on SmackDown on Tuesday. And they've been like, like, like Rant said with a great point there, you know, the new day cost uh, Rollins and Ambrose tag titles. Um, they also, it was also made Kurt Angle look stupid when the new day thought, you know, he thought the new day was going to be siege number two, right. It made Kurt Angle look stupid. It, the new day in a lot of ways is a catalyst for a lot of the shit that happened this last week. Kurt Angle getting berated, Kurt Angle having to get rid of Jason Jordan, Mm -hmm. like all that stuff caused Stephanie to come out and be like, what the fuck are you doing? And so we always like to get on Stephanie, you know, for her thing, but in some ways it's kind of justified. But in the same way, the shield was like, Oh, wait a sec, Steph, where the fuck you been? You know what I mean? So there's, we got got in my, in my opinion, this is in terms of story and match quality, this is probably the most complete match on the card for both. Um, we'll, we'll, and, talk, we'll talk about this match for years, yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, like, and I, I think the only thing that, I, that upsets me about this, and I'm not upset, 
Because I would have loved to see this with like with them being on the same brands and being able to like have a banter and a back and forth. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I would have loved to see that because the New Day are so clever and the Shield are so badass. You know what I mean? Like it feels like that would have been just a lot of fun. But that's okay. You know, it didn't happen. But in my opinion, of all the stories that were semi-told, this is the actual story. This is the real story to me of all the matches, right? It feels like there was something here, as Rance had alluded to. And I've been giving this pay-per-view a lot of shit. And I think, I've said before, from a match quality standpoint, this is a great card. From a story quality standpoint, I'm not sold as much. But this one has a little bit of both. And I I feel like we're going to get... Rant said this might be the show stealer, and it might be. I, I, I would, you know, I would admit that it could be. So it's I'm really looking, hard to. Uh, the problem? <laughs> no, no, you're fine. The problem with this match is I feel like the result is a little predictable, in my opinion. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I really would agree. don't. I really don't see the new. I'd be very surprised if the new day won this match. To be honest with you, yeah, it depends on what their plan is with the shield going forward. You know what I mean? I kind of feel like the Shield is going to win this match because they still haven't really had that pay-per-view match together yet since they came back because Roman got sick before TLC. Yep. So I feel like eh, it's either one of two things. It's either the Shield wins because LOL the Shield, right? They're back. They got to win their first match back together on a pay-per-view or shenanigans. You know, that's the only that's to me. That's the the other thing. Or, or some kind of build towards shenanigans. Uh, so, yeah, that's where I'm at with that. I don't know what kind of shenanigans you could have in that, but uh, I will say to your point about Show Stealer, uh, it's hard to steal the show when you've become, just in five days, one of the focal points of the show. That's a good point. That's a very good point. I'll give you that. Um, so, a couple of things. First and foremost, we... Nowadays, everybody want to talk. They got something to say, but nothing comes out when you lose your lips. But it's about the difference with everybody. I forget, forgot about the New Day. Oh, I, I love it. We forget that for a while, the New Day could never lose. Right? Yeah. So let's not forget that the New Day are absolutely can go neck and neck with the Shield. On on one one matches, hell no. On three to on three and th- on a three to three match, and a, a a shield who, as Xavier Woods continues to eloquate beautifully, are they really together because they want to be, right? Or is this a case of we have to be? The New Day is a team. He said it perfectly. It's this time next year, we'll still be a team. They won't. Ugh. And I pardon also, me. I, I... Pardon me. It's okay. No, I, I know how you feel about this stuff. That's fine. Um, I also want to give myself some credit because what did I say after the Hell in Cell pay-per-view? Do y'all remember? <laughs> I, know, I know damn well what you said, pal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that didn't make air, but um, you uh, you predicted Shield New Day. And what yeah. pay-per-view was it that I predicted to happen? Survivor Series. And why did I predict that, Caleb? Uh, you had predicted that because of Xavier Woods had started to wrestle more matches and, uh, he had started to look strong. So they had started like, they were going toward like, Oh, he's equal with these three. So yeah, whole thing there, but, uh, I'll pat you on the back. So you don't look like Barry Horowitz. Okay. I appreciate that. I just, I, I couldn't see where else, the, where else the new day, to, the new day could go. And we knew the oh, show was going to get back together. Yeah. And um, my, uh, my groan was not about the prospect of like, Oh, shield new day or whatever. It's about the prospect of like these three still being a team next year, because like I really want to see Big E do single stuff again. Well, I think the New Day is so unique that they could still be in a team and still be ah yeah like beer money individual. style yeah. huh yeah yeah absolutely uh because they're they're invested. Um, I've heard interviews with all, with those three guys where they said they got enough written material to last them three more years, and they legitimately want to be together. But that doesn't mean that you know, DX back in the day, you know, Outlaws went for the tag titles, Hunter went for the world title, Pac did European, whatever else, you know, European, but, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yes, this match is as big and as epic as uh, as possible. We don't 
for some reason look at the new day with the proper reverence. Excuse God me. bless you. Thank you. We don't look at the new day with the proper reverence, but the new day is one easily one of the top ten, maybe top five, three man teams of all time. They're easily one of the top stables of all time from success. Yeah, they're up they, there with like the Horsemen. Yeah. Yes, they got the tag title reign. They have the tag title of the, the the longest. They have the tag title reigns. They have the wins. They have the merch sales. We got to give them credit. And yes, we, I know it's I know it's the of the top five guys, full time guys in the company. The Shield of three of them. I get that. But this isn't a shit. This isn't the Shield who seamlessly three people worked as one person back in like they were back in the day. They got to get their foot in back. You know. And can they really can they really trust Rollins in a push situation with when it's the real full shield? We don't know that. You know, it's different when it was Rollins and Angle and, and Ambrose. This is this is the family, these are the brothers. So yeah, um I'm here for this, bro. You and I'm a shield mark anyway, so Yeah. Carl, I... did you 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 said a bit about this match, didn't you? Yeah, I, I too am here for this match, uh, and I, I think I will like, be. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it could be the show stealer. I don't think it will, but I think it could. Yeah. Again, I, I would think that it could if it you know wasn't one of the focal points of the show. But um, man, uh, wow, <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Prediction. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be huge. Um, oh, prediction God. shield wins. I, I like uh, how, I like how we started with you being a trumpet and we ended with you using being a trumpet. Oh God, <laughs> guys! For anyone listening to this and Rance, do not edit this out. I am not a trumpet. Rance, I swear. Edit that out. Oh, do not easy. edit that out, sir. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take the shield. I'm I'm gonna take the new day. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> R- sorry, R- R- sorry. Uh, Rance wants the LOL Shield, but he knows he can't. Oh no, I want, the, I want, no, I, I want the Shield to win. I want the Shield to never lose. I, I say <laughs> the New Day because there undefeated. Is, there is so much more that can that there's so much more story that can come out of this with the New Day winning than it Hell yeah. with than it can with the Shield. And right now we're going into oh we remember how to book season right. We're getting to the Rumble, and things about to start making sense now, like they didn't the past three, four months. So, that said, you gotta you're gonna have to get some type of something. Something's gonna happen with the Shield, right? Are they gonna yeah. Are they gonna wrestle Are they gonna wrestle a, a six man tag at WrestleMania? Are they gonna wrestle each other? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Something's gotta happen, and I, I got to know they winning. And and. So- you also, feel like the seeds are going to be planted Sunday something's for the going Shield to uh, something's have going some to friction. Happen. And, and WWE likes to even the shit out, right? If you remember, uh, last year, Raw won the other two matches, but SmackDown won the main. Raw's going to win the men's 5 on 5, but the Shield's going to win this one. I mean, the New Day. Yeah, so, yeah. There you yeah, the, don't you dare yeah. be sour. The pay per view will not be one sided. I don't th- in terms of like brands winning. Um, Jesus H Christ, guys, we have gone forever, Terry Funk style. Um, happy uh, Survivor Series to those of you that are be- that will be celebrating. Um, congratulations to Billy Corgan, Dave Lagana, and Tim Storm for attempting to resuscitate the ten pounds of gold. Um, that's unrelated to the goodbyes. Uh, Carl, sir, where can I find you? Could you write on Twitter or do, are you on Twitter? Do you write on any websites or anything? What's the deal uh, there? Well, I not really writing on websites at this moment, but, but I will shout out Lords of Pain.net just because there are a lot of great writers there. And as of now, nobody's told me that I'm kicked off. So I don't know yet. Chad. Uh, of course. Yeah. Rich. Chad. Uh, Chad and Rich and all the guys I disagree Finish with. Finish it up. Um, but uh, Maverick, yes, but, yeah, Maverick, yeah. Yeah, there's a ton of, yeah, ton we, of we, talent. We, we could Keto, go on and on. 
<laughs> Anyways, um, but you can find me usually on, on Twitter dropping those hot takes at K-E-R-V-I-N-S-M-C. Uh, hit the follow button. It's really not that hard, guys. I mean, you just, like, you see my name, right? And then over to the right, there's a button. You can click. It says follow. And you just tap your little finger, boop, on your phone. And there you go. You're following all that hotness. And that's it. That's all I got. Rants. <laughs> Rants. Caleb up, died. Man? I don't know what happened. Caleb died. Rants, uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, holla at your boy at it's Ray Cash R E Y as in Mysterio C A S H as in dollars. Uh, I plan on starting to write back again sometime. It'll be for Lords of Pain and Social Suplex. Speaking of Social Suplex, uh, shout out to SocialSuplex.com, Social Suplex Podcast Network at Social Suplex. Holla at us. Uh, we have a new podcast to the family. We do. Shout out to the Ricky and Clive show. It sounds like you're listening to Noam Dar yeah. talk to Drew McIntyre. It's crazy, but they got good stuff. But uh, yeah, they. But like th- we get to hear their accents, but then they get to hear all our our twangs and our WCW. Twang. So, the, uh, gay so we, the gay community. The uh, gay <laughs> community. <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. I'm sorry, Rance. I stepped on your toes again. Oh, Goddamn. No, you're good, man. Um, just want to throw out a couple of Twitters. Uh, Social Suplex at One Nation Radio at Ricky and Clive. Shout out to the logo guy at Sir Mike Fergus. We owe him a huge uh, debt of gratitude. Uh, follow the podcast at the SMC Podcast. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, Caleb, one, more one more thing. One more. One more thing before Caleb. Close this out. I just want to say we are on the road to WrestleMania. The three of us, the SMC podcast, we're still yes. on the road to WrestleMania. We got Tickets the room will be book on Monday. Tickets will be in hand very, very soon. We're going. We're going to be there. So if you guys are fans of the show, if you're fans of us, if you don't know us, if you do know us, we want to get together and hang out a little bit while we're down there. Well, so if you're going to be in New Orleans, you got to let us know. The caveat being if you don't know us, Please don't be the type that would try to wear our skin. Right, so right, that, right. Like that's that's just our simple request there. And if that you, would and if be you a are, just choose Caleb. It's fine. Pardon? I said if you are that type, just choose Caleb. Yeah, I mean I got the most skin here, so yeah, let's and just he's yeah, let's say that. So it's gonna be the purest. Yeah, we got old skin. Yeah. Yep. Yep, so, they got old skin, man. <laughs> um, okay, guys, you can find me on Twitter at smc underscore cal b. Um, rants ran through all the podcast accounts, Ricky and Clive, One Nation Radio, Social Suplex, SMC Podcast, of course. We need more followers. We always do. Um, our goal is to get to 69,000. And nice. Um, nice. Yes. And um, also, guys, if you have an Android, um, obviously it doesn't matter what app you use to listen to us. We appreciate every listener we have. If you use Podbean, that's even better. Uh, those of you that uh, made the unfortunate life choice of buying an iPhone, you can find oh, us on you. iTunes. Yeah, we're sorry for you guys. We still love yeah, you. Yeah, we're though. sorry. We do. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We're, phone choice. We're, we're aside, sorry. We have the best technology as well. If but you, y'all, if but you, y'all use Samsung technology. Yeah. No. Yep. Fake news. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you use a Windows phone, if they have a podcast app, download us on there too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're even oh on youtube gosh. just yes we are what, what's the channel what's the youtube channel one nation wrestling one nation wrestling hell yeah subscribe to subscribe to us on there uh i have one simple request for you if you are going to go on twitter and you're going to throw judgments out insults uh, whatever whatever the case may be hot takes that you are adamant about and you want to you want to put everything on them Put your fucking name and your fucking face on them, or at least your your face. I'll say that. As, as that, the no, big homie Ti says, put an address on that hoe. There we go. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Same. Um, that bit of seriousness aside, guys, we love you like in a very platonic way. We love you. Well, speak thank for yourself, you for brother. Oh yeah. Um, Ooh, la, thank la. you all for listening. Um. If you manage to make it through this entire marathon, awesome. Awesome. Because it's going to be like this again next week. 
maybe we don't know um <laughs> thank you all for listening y'all have a good night and god bless you